though. For a chance at the upset, heavy underdog Miami needs Jimmy Butler to be aggressive, advises ESPN's Kendrick Perkins. If I'm Jimmy Butler, I'm not waiting on anybody. I'm not being passive. I'm coming out and I'm emptying the clip. And I, when I say that, Jimmy Butler throughout this series, he needs to take 25 to 30 shots a game. And no one is going to be mad at him. And I, I think he will. I think Eric Spoelstra will put him in position to do that. Coach Doc Rivers firing apparently did not sit well with 76ers star big man Joel Embiid. GM Daryl Morey said Embiid was shocked and surprised by Rivers' dismissal. Morey added it's up to him to convince Embiid he'll be as close to his next coach. Regarding James Harden, Morey did say Philadelphia is interested in bringing him back. Harden has a $35.6 million option for this upcoming season. It's Wrangler season out there. Open roads, endless horizons. Shop Wrangler.com for new denim styles. Made for your next adventure. Wrangler, for the ride of life. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge. New Orleans, Alexandria, <laughs> live from, from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Musu. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Oh, by the way, it's a hump day. hump day let's hump everybody mike 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 what day is it mike tigers get back in the winner's circle wheels up to athens ga it's hump day foster morrow explains why he picked the saints mike 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 what day is it mike a little bit of a tearjerker we'll head to athens it's hump day. Anthony Dasher covers the Bulldogs. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? He'll be here. Hump day. We got Bourbon Dictionary. It's hump day. We got Overrated, Underrated. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? We got Pluckers Trivia. Hump day. I'm going to dance like a jackass at 445 during Tigers in the Pros. It's hump day. Get ready for it all, people. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Drink it in. Hump day. It goes down smooth every time. It's hump day. All right, let's get cooking here. We're pumped to have you aboard with us. Uh, we got all that to talk about, but as is customary, we will begin the show as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. All right, LSU baseball gets the win. They beat McNeese 7-4. to four. Ho-hum. Not a lot to say about this one, considering, uh, look, McNeese is a good team, and this was far from a perfect game. LSU did commit four errors in the ball game, which uh, we can discuss. Um, we, we can discuss the defensive inefficiencies um, that took place in moments last night. But by and large, you did what you had to do. Here was Jay Johnson on the win over McNeese. I mean, I'm just going to call it like it is. There was a lot of things we did not do very well. Mm -hmm. We did not play uh, very good defense. Um, we made a couple of mistakes with a couple of signs, which, I mean, that shouldn't happen at this point in the season. Um, we'll, we're having a team meeting before we get on the, the bus tomorrow to cover this game, almost like a football film review uh, style. But I like that we overcame some of that. Uh, 
you did commit four errors in the ball game. You uh, the the third inning, Blake Money got the start and pitched pretty well in the first two innings and got the first two batters in the third. Then allowed five consecutive singles. It started on a bunt, uh, which got their their five consecutive singles uh, rolling, uh, of which three came home uh, to tie the ball game. But LSU did what they've done a lot this year. Whenever they face adversity, whenever they got down, they answered. And when McNeese took the lead in the um, uh, in the sixth inning, the top of the sixth, LSU answered uh, in the sixth with back-to-back homers, which was great to see. Cade Beloso hit a homer, followed by Hayden Travinsky, who also homered in the ball game uh, right back-to-back to give LSU a lead. And the Tigers had an opportunity there twice, actually, in the game to really maybe blow it open a little bit, where they had first and second with nobody out, and both times he had Malazzo up. Both times they tried to bunt Malazzo. Both times he didn't get the bunt down. And both times he struck out. And then Gavin Dukas subsequently grounded into a double play both times. So, look, it was far, 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 far from perfect for LSU. But you got down. You responded. You limited the damage from the bump. And that's the other thing that Jay Johnson talked about was the pitcher's uh, in the ball game, as everybody has just obviously been keeping it close. They've been under a microscope because of what's happened here of late with this staff. But you know, his whole message was, look, you know, make it, make the damage small, limit it. By and large, LSU did that. Really, really proud of the effort of the pitchers. I thought Blake uh, pitched better than that line. I think the only thing I would have liked to seen him do is after the two out, nobody on bunt. I just would have liked to have seen him uh, corral it a little bit quicker than giving up uh, you know, four or five more hits in a row. But I thought he threw strikes. I thought he was poised and gave us a really, really good performance. You know, with Griffin Herring, he wobbled a little bit once uh, walking the leadoff guy, and then he made an error himself and uh, overcame all those things. And with our offense, sometimes you just need to keep it small. Griffin did a great job of keeping it small. I mean, Sam Dutton, that was a big performance. I mean, he gave up five hits, scattered five hits, but didn't give up any runs. And uh, I thought he was in the zone with just about every pitch. He had them in between and did an excellent job. Gavin Guidry, two-thirds of an inning, two big strikeouts yeah. right there. And... Um, all of those guys did a good job getting after the first hitter that they faced today, and they were ready when they came out of the bullpen. And then, of course, that's your uh, really big-time stuff right there to finish that off. So really proud of the pitchers tonight. You used five pitchers. Um, Money, Herring, and Dutton all extended a little bit, but you wouldn't expect to use any of them on Thursday. Remember, this weekend you're at Georgia for a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Oddly, game one is at 5 o'clock Central. Uh, so that's in the Eastern time zone, they play at 6 at Georgia. So it's 5 o'clock Central for games one and two, unfortunately. Um, so we'll be on air for the final hour of the show Thursday, Friday, whenever they're, they're playing uh, games one and two. But uh, Blake Money gave you three innings, needed 57 pitches. We chronicled the issues that he had there uh, in the third inning. Uh, Griffin Herring followed with three innings of his own. Again, he tap danced around some trouble. He had a leadoff walk. He only walked two. Uh, he did strike out two, but allowed just the one run over three innings. That's what Jay was saying. You know, make it small when you have errors, or or when you when you make mistakes, make them small. Don't make them hurt. Like the first inning of Game Three against Kentucky, where or uh, against Auburn, where Christian Little and Griffin Herring walked seven guys in the first inning. If you're if you make mistakes, make them small. Don't make them crushing. Uh, Sam Dutton came in. Uh, he gave up five hits, but didn't allow a run. Uh, Gavin Guidry came in in the ninth and got the first two outs, got into a little bit of trouble. They go to Thatcher Hurd to get the final out, and he does. He was he was overpowering and got a weak ground out to end the ball game. So, you know, one of the things Jay said going into this game was they wanted to, they probably had an opportunity where they needed to get some of those guys who struggled on Sunday back in the game to get them back on the mound, get them feeling good again. And it looks like, by and large, they were able to do that, which was good to see. So um, LSU gets the win. They beat McNeese 7-4. Uh, to four. They hit 40 wins on the season, 40-12. and 12. I'm not mistaken. I believe it's the first time LSU's won 40 games in the regular season since 2015. That was the Omaha team. That was fantastic. Had Alex Lang, you know, obviously at the front of the rotation. Um, so you're talking about a, you know, a really, really successful uh, in total regular season with you know three games to go and you're at 17 and 9 in the league and you're going on the road to take on a Georgia team that's dead last in the east they're 10 and 17 in the conference they are a bit of an enigma I mean this is an this is a Georgia team that we're going to talk about it next hour we're going to go to Athens talk to Anthony Dasher who covers the Bulldogs but when you look at this Georgia team they're they're kind of an enigma in that they get swept by Missouri this past weekend the week before they won a series against Tennessee 
They lose a series to Ole Miss. You know, they they sweep a series against, or they win a series against Arkansas. Like they've they've almost improbably beaten the good teams and lost to the bad teams uh, here over the last month. So, what does that mean for LSU? I, you know, LSU's what? Yeah, I mean, they're LSU's the third best team in the conference right now by record. So, if history shows, Georgia should play pretty well, but. Georgia isn't a team that has a frontline starter like the last two weekends where they could pitch backwards. Georgia has released its rotation. They're going to start a freshman lefty in game one. Um, Charlie Goldstein is a junior lefty, and Liam uh, Sullivan, who's also a junior lefty, are going to start game two and three. Those have been weekend guys for Georgia. They're all kind of been jumbled just because they just haven't found a ton of consistency there in Athens. So we'll talk more about the Bulldogs uh, one hour from right now. But for LSU, they got the win. Now your wheel's up to Georgia and. School's over. It's all baseball here on out. Just go focus on winning a weekend and setting yourself up to get a double bye in the SEC tournament next week and lock up your national seed. All right. Uh, it's after further review. Our opens are brought to you by our friends at Bud Light. Uh, drink easy. Um, I mentioned this yesterday and I screwed it up. <laughs> uh, this Friday, Live After Five is sponsored by Michelob Ultra Pure Gold. I said Michelob Ultra, but it's Michelob Ultra Pure Gold, the golden hour. Michael Foster Project is performing in downtown Baton Rouge at Live After Five. And, of course, our friends at Mockler Beverage are sponsoring Live After Five. Big weekend, not just Live After Five Friday. Uh, Paris County Line, uh, sponsored by Bud Light, will be at the Crawfish Hole on Saturday starting at 11 a.m. And then Smoke Em If You Got Them, great event benefiting our military, will be Sunday held at Beausoleil uh, at 4 o'clock, sponsored by Bud Weiser. So our friends at Mockler Beverage have been so just ingrained in our community for four decades. And there's uh, there's an area... Uh, a charity event that you've been to, or an organization you love or support that hasn't been in some way positively affected by our friends at Mockler Beverage. So we're proud that Bud Light is the official beer of AFR and proud to stand alongside our friends at Mockler Beverage every single day here on AFR. Drink easy. All right, it's after further review. We'll knock out a quick break. We'll talk plenty of baseball today when we come back. Um, Brian Kelly, who's been making the media rounds, uh, did kind of give an update on one of the very important off-field roles on his staff. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's AFR. AFR. Take 60 seconds. Remind you about our friends over at Rouse's. Hey, we're heading toward uh, graduations. A lot of graduations are starting now. You're starting to see the Instagram cap and gown photos all over the place. If you're having that Instagram, or excuse me, that Instagram, if you're having that graduation party and you want the cake for that grad, you can get it at Rouse's. Go to the Rouse's Bakery. Call up your local Rouse's. You want a personalized cake for your grad, you can get it at Rouse's. Also, Rouse's gift cards. What a great gift for that grad on your list. They're going to be moving out, going to live in the dorm, going to be living where on their own, the apartment, whatever it may be, shopping for their own groceries for the first time. Hook them up with a Rouse's gift card, something they are sure to use. You can go to Rouse's.com to pick up that gift card or any of the Rouse's locations. And if you're curious about all of the weekly specials, just go to Rouse's.com or the Rouse's app. There's a weekly ad tab, and it'll show you all the promotions for that week at all of the Rouse's locations. Rouse's.com for Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. 
Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with Front to Back Boat Service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to back boat service. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Uh, this might be of absolutely no interest to many of you, and that's fine. But um, I have been doing a uh, like a day in the life Instagram today on my story. So a lot of people ask what a day is like. A lot of people might be aspiring media members or just curious who listen to the show all the time, or you listen to podcasts or Morning Scone or AFR. A lot of people ask. So I started this morning, and I've just been doing like a a uh, an Instagram story day in the life. So I'll do one right now. All right, we're live on air right now and uh there's muse you want to wave muse there's Polly. we're doing this live and our radio and television audience are probably really confused why we're doing this live but just to prove we are doing lights 3 17 p.m in the afternoon and uh yeah so if you're listening live go look at my instagram story at matt Moscone, and you can see this we're uh, we're doing a live radio show all right gonna go ahead and post that there it is. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, if you can. And that'll carry on through the show today. And then uh, afterwards, T-Bob and I will do, uh, we'll do scone and tea tonight over at Oliver Twist. By the way, the um, I'm excited about this. The Oliver Twist break-even pour tonight is Old Elk Weeded, the eight-year Old Elk Weeded Bourbon. So very, it's uh, $7 uh, per pour. So if you're not doing anything tonight or if you are doing something, change your plans. Come hang out with us at uh, Oliver Twist tonight, 7 o'clock for scone and tea. If you can't be there, watch it on the Watch 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Uh, LSU football, by and large, had incredible stability year to year after uh, from year one to year two under Brian Kelly. Of course, Jamar Kane left in the middle of spring, and uh, you know Pete Jenkins was with us last week and talked about Jimmy Lindsey. And Pete Jenkins, of course, le- legendary defensive line coach who has worked with Jamar Kane uh, at LSU when he came in and consulted a bit. Also knows Jimmy Lindsay and uh, Gerald Chapman, who had filled in kind of as the interim defensive line coach until they made a, a full-time hire. And Pete Jenkins said, look, he was of the belief, knowing Matt House, that Jimmy Lindsay is actually a better fit for what Matt House wants to do defensively than Jamar Kane was. I mean, Jamar is a great guy and a great defensive line coach. He's with the Broncos now. But LSU might have upgraded there just based on what the defensive coordinator wants. It, we'll see how it all plays out. But it was an interesting thought. And then obviously we saw after spring that Brian Polian, who had been moved from his special teams coordinator role to the off-field GM role, uh, was leaving to become uh, the athletic director at, at his alma mater. And there was a lot of, I know there was a lot of prodding and joking about Brian Polian leaving. Some just assumed that this was a supply way of, of them firing him, saying, go find a new job. Um, and, and I kind of pushed back against that a little bit. There is, again, just to reiterate, it is, there, there is no argument to be made for Brian Polian to have remained on staff as special teams coordinator. They were atrocious. We look at all of the metrics, all of the stats, everything. It, there's that, 
you know, FPI does that efficiency rating. Pro foot, or you know, Pro Football Focus for the college does their efficiency metrics as well. Uh, and when you combine all of your efficiencies and, and all the special teams um, units, and LSU was 125th in the country last year in special teams efficiency. They were awful. There, there was no explanation. So, I, I'm not. I, I am not now, nor would I ever argue for Brian Polian in that role. They needed to replace him, and ultimately they did. We'll see if the path they're taking will work. But they kept Brian Polian in a general manager role. And some people just assumed that was just sort of like... so. Like I'll give you an example. When Joe Oliva got fired at LSU, and he was fired at LSU, because they were still paying him, they kept him as like an emeritus role, you know, like a fundraiser or whatever. Joe Oliva's worst attribute, as at, well, and he had a lot of bad attributes. One of his worst, attri- worst attributes was he couldn't raise money. He was so disliked that they couldn't fundraise around Joe Oliva. So keeping him on as a fundraiser was just laughable. It was like, hey, we're paying you this money anyway. Instead of saying we're firing you, you kind of get ahead of the uh, ahead of the resume a little bit. We'll pay you. You'll be an emeritus role or whatever, and you'll just go out to pasture. Like, you know, he'll go sunbathe out at his house at U-Club like he used to do before he moved to Florida. You could tell my disdain for Joe Oliva. He was absolutely horrendous at his job. But um, this wasn't the case with with Brian Polian. Uh, Brian Polian had been with Brian Kelly, uh And that general manager role is one that Brian Kelly very much um, counts on. And when we talk about Polian having also been in the specialty, or excuse me, in the recruiting coordinator role, that doesn't necessarily mean you're an awesome in home recruiter or anything, but so much of that is just organizing the board and strategies and and all, making sure you have roster management. Are you attacking the portal, freshman? You know what I mean? Like there's a lot that goes into that as far as managing the roster and delegating those responsibilities. And Brian Kelly very clearly trusted Brian Polian and put him in that role. Now, I don't mean to rehash the whole Brian Polian conversation. I only bring this up because Brian Kelly has been doing the media rounds, right? He did an interview with uh, Jacques Doucet, did an interview with Michael Cobble, our buddy from WBRZ. He was on the morning show with Hester and T-Bob here. He, he's he's bounced around a bunch, and he visited with Collada here recently. I don't think they've released the full thing, um, but this clip uh, has been posted, and it was about... Uh, finding a replacement for Polian in the GM role. You know, and, and we're happy f- for Brian. He gets a chance to go back to his alma mater. I mean, that's a great opportunity for him. But this is a strategic position because it really, when you talk about it, it's it's somebody that knows football, right, and, and has to have a football background, um, but also strategy, right? If you were just creating a, um, like, a... a fake position if it was this was just a made-up role just to keep somebody on staff you wouldn't then replace that role when that person was gone so very clearly Brian Kelly and the fact that they are moving to replace Brian Polian and to bring in a new general manager like he said you got to know football but it's also strategy and then you're also talking about all the organization of college recruiting everything from like managing your board and like what positions do you need? Again, we can look back almost a decade. Remember, Austin Thomas was hired at LSU. He was on staff under Les from 2013 through 2015 when Les was fired and Ed Ogeron was hired. In 2016, Ed Ogeron promoted Austin Thomas to that general manager role, kind of created and named it general manager. Now Austin left and came back and is now at Ole Miss, but... Um, it's not new, is my point. I mean, Austin Thomas filled that role here in 2016, and a lot of schools do that now. But roster management is so important. And I know we harp on this so much, but th- just think about where LSU is right now at safety. They're, they're still pursuing Andre Sam, the the transfer who you know, was at McNeese and then Marshall and transferred this offseason to Tulane, and now before he's even played Tulane, he's back in the portal and deciding between apparently Miami or LSU. They're still pursuing a safety because they had a giant hole there. There were misses in the recruiting process. You know, Brian Kelly was just trying to plug holes last year, so he went after some some transfers, and it, and it worked. I mean, Joe Fouché was a great Band-Aid a year ago, but it was a one-year fix, and you have some young dudes that you're trying to step up into that role, and they still need more depth and experience at that position. You know, running back is another great example. It's so odd that in this state, in Louisiana, where I can look back 20 years, go back to Kevin Falk, and you can roll through from Kevin Falk and Rondell Mealy to LeBrandon Tofield and Allie Broussard and Justin Vincent and Joseph Adai. I mean, you can, Chiron Carey, I mean, you can go all down the list. Hester and Keelan and Charles Scott. I mean, 
you could go through Kenny Hilliard and then Richard Murphy and Jeremy Hill. I'm leaving dudes off. Michael Ford, um, Fournette, Geis, Clyde. I mean, all the all the running backs from this state that LSU just boom, boom, boom. To get to a spot where you've gone three years without a, a real bell cow running back is just, it's inexcusable. But that's that's kind of the way that they sort of mishandled the roster before Brian Kelly got here. So he tried to supplement last year, of course. He went and got... Uh, Noah Kane out of the transfer portal, signed two freshman running backs. Now they've added Logan Diggs as well. Again, they're they're building the numbers. Look at tight end. I mean, you literally had no time. I mean, you're only, you had like one and a half tight ends last year. I mean, now you're looking at, you know, you've got uh, Mason Taylor coming back and you're excited about that. But after that, it's a whole bunch of freshmen because you mismanaged that position previously, you know, with the previous staff. And so you have these holes. And it's like, that's not just... You know, um, that, that's not just symptomatic of, of Ogeron. It, it became a problem, which is ultimately why the, it, it went the way it did. But even look back to 2015. Remember, Les Miles back in 2015 had more scholarship kickers and punters than he did linebackers. I mean, it was, it was crazy. He said they had six kickers and punters on scholarship, uh, and they had, I think, five linebackers. So it, it's not... It sometimes pops up as a problem, but it's why this position matters so much. It's why you have to have somebody that's constantly looking at your roster, constantly looking at the transfer portal, constantly looking at the recruiting board, and having a plan A, B, C. So if you get this guy, great, but if not, what's our plan B, C to make sure that we we have an option at those spots so you don't end up with more place kickers than linebackers on your roster. You don't end up with five running backs and none of them are worthy of getting 100 carries in a season. That's that's the problem you have to avoid. And that's why you have to have someone managing that. And Brian Kelly knows it, and that's why he's going to replace Brian Polian. It, it wasn't a, I'll maintain this, it was never just a placeholder job for Brian Polian. It wasn't just a, a hey, I, I'm doing my friend a solid. We're already paying him, so just carve out some role for him. No, it's he valued Brian Polian's opinion and strategy and football and talent evaluation and all that stuff. And Brian Polian's a guy who's in his late 40s and has a family and, was tired of living a transient life and had an opportunity to set roots and go back to his alma mater. So he's doing that, and you can't fault the guy for it. But for LSU, replacing that position is going to be important, and Brian Kelly said as much. And they are looking to quickly replace Brian Pulley and add another, at a different GM in that spot. All right, it's after further review. Uh, Hump Day Shows are brought to you by Pluckers. We're glad to have you hanging out with us here. Ton to get to. Taylor Calandro in about 15 minutes. We'll talk some booze. I love telling you about Mold Zero USA because they're a great company, man. Jim Woodworth has just done amazing work throughout his professional career. Military background, having been in the Air Force for many, many years. I did disaster uh, management, uh, actually in New York post 9-11. He came to Louisiana after the BP oil spill stayed. So this is right up his alley. Mold Zero USA, if you need remediation work, if you have mold or odors, uh, any type of remediation, they can help. And they're going to save you money. You can call Jim and talk to him. He'll explain how this is going to save you thousands compared to regular remediation products so or processes. So if you have mold or think you might, you have odors or other pathogens, Mold Zero can knock it out with their patented non-toxic dry fog. It's easy, y'all. It'll take less than a day in most cases. They'll come in. They'll spray their fog. They'll let it dwell. As soon as the fog dissipates, you can go back in your home free and clear, your office, whatever the building may be. You can learn more. Go to the website. There's a 225 and a 504 number right there at the top of the page. Call either of them, but they service all of South Louisiana. It's Mold Zero USA, mold-zerousa.com. All right, it is after further review. Um, as we mentioned, LSU baseball got a win last night against McNeese. They took off wheels up to Athens uh, a bit earlier today. 5 o'clock Central first pitch for game one tomorrow. We're going to go to Athens in 45 minutes. So just after hour two, we're going to uh, uh, 45 minutes. We'll be in Athens. We'll talk to Anthony Dasher to preview the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, we'll look forward to that. Let me not get a quick break. We'll go around the SEC and then Bourbon Dictionary here in about 15 minutes on AFR. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. Had a great day, actually, on Monday. Got to sit uh, and record the Rosters to Riches podcast with Gordon. We're going to be dropping that here in a couple of weeks. Great insight in the mind behind the man. And getting to know the man as well. The man that you've seen on billboards and radio and TV ads for years three decades and what you've started to learn and see is the humanity behind the man as well is a a successful businessman who loves helping people and has taken a lot of his success and built this charitable arm you know Gordon gives to help people in so many different areas of life and times of the year you can go to gordongives.com to learn more gordongives.com 
There's always something popping over there, growing the G team and doing great giveaways and other charitable endeavors. It's Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. But as we always say, if you've been in an accident and it's not your fault, you need representation. Don't go it alone. Do what injured people in Louisiana have done for 30 years. Get Gordon and get it done. Go to getgordon.com. Remember, get Gordon and get it done. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Bayou Ford has $15,000 off plus 0.9% APR for 60 months on all new 22 Ford F-150 SEA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time, but until... When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all of that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. There it is. The Extra Mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So you After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. The uh, New Orleans Saints have finalized their 2023 preseason schedule. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, Saints are going to kick off their preseason August 13th against the Kansas City Chiefs. That'll be in the Dome Three games, uh, you know, of course, the uh, NFL has moved to a 17-game regular season, so three uh, preseason games. Saints only played two last year. Obviously, their final preseason game was uh, was canceled. So, uh, for the Saints, they will um, host the Chiefs week one of the preseason. Week two, they'll be at the Chargers. That's August the 20th. And then their final preseason game will be August the 27th against the Houston Texans. That is going to be a nationally televised game. Um by Fox. So that'll be a uh, a 7 o'clock Central Time kickoff nationally televised by Fox. So three games. Chiefs at Chargers, home against Texans. No word in the release if the Saints and the Texans or the Saints and the Chargers are going to practice against each other in the week leading up to their preseason game. That's something the Saints have customarily done. And by and large, they've done that against the, um, uh, against the Houston Texans when they've had the opportunity. But that became very contentious 
in years past. We'll see if they do with uh, with the Chargers this year out in L.A. So three preseason games for the New Orleans Saints are now set, two at home, one on the road. All right, it's after further review. Glad to have you aboard with us here. Uh, we'll do some Bourbon Dictionary 10 minutes from right now. Right now, we do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products, excellence in imaging solutions. The Arkansas Razorbacks. This is another blow to the second-ranked Hogs baseball team. Second baseman Peyton Stovall, he'll undergo surgery to repair a torn labrum. He's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Stovall is the fourth Razorback to suffer a season-ending injury, joining Jackson Wiggins, Cody Frank, and Dylan Carter. Uh, Stovall missed the last two weeks of action for the Hogs. They hope rest would heal it. It hasn't. He has surgery done for the year. Stovall, of course, is from Houghton, from North Louisiana. Was uh, batting 345. Uh, before conference play started, but just 193 in 21 conference games. Razorbacks are at Vandy this weekend. The Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky's landed a commitment from NC State running back transfer, Demi Sumo Karnbaye. Excuse me. It's hyphenated. You want to try it? Well, I can't see it. So, I mean, that's not going to work. With that name, it sounds like it should be at Vanderbilt because all they do is have weird names on that team. Oh, that's coming, actually. Okay, of course. See, of course it is. I didn't even know that. It's coming, and I'm excited about it. Okay. Uh, six foot two ten running back. Shows the Wildcats over South Carolina, Missouri, and Colorado. Three years to play two seasons. Of course, Wildcats lost Chris Rodriguez to the draft. Cavassia Smoke is at Colorado. The Tennessee Volunteers. Emmanuel Okoye grew up in Nigeria, was recently part of the NFL Academy program in England. Said he plans to play college football at Tennessee, 6'5", 230. Also had offers from USC, Texas Tech. Those were his other finalists, I should say. He'll enroll at Tennessee this summer, eligible this season in 2023. Uh, Played three games last fall for the NFL Academy team. Those are his first and only games of experienced organized football. The Vanderbilt Commodores. Remember, literally 10 days ago, we told you about Grand Valley State transfer cornerback Nizir for Quarion. I do remember that. Remember that? I do. Ni- Nizir for, for, for Quarion. Yeah. For, for, for Quarions. For Quarion. For Quarion. Right? For Quarion. For Quarion. Committed to Vanderbilt May 7th, 10 days ago. He flipped to Wisconsin. No. Oh, oh. Boo. Division II All-American cornerback, 6'1", 185. He played two seasons under Matt Mitchell, who's the new Wisconsin outside linebackers coach. Mitchell was the head coach at Grand Valley State. So he's joining his former head coach now at Wisconsin instead of going to Vanderbilt. So we've struck out, man. Simi Shitu's gone. He's gone. Anthony Orgy's now with the New Orleans Saints. Our guy Nizer for Quarion, he's flipped to to Wisconsin. I, they they need to go flip the guy from Kentucky now. Who's the guy from Kentucky? You just his name. No, that wasn't that bad. That was just a hyphenated okay. thing. I mean, that was just. A, I'm just bummed. Feel like we had something something special, something brewing. We had there. something special with Nazir for Quarion. For Quarion, but he's going to Wisconsin now. Four carry-ons on his flight to Wisconsin, to Madtown. Four, four carry-on. Four carry-on luggage. Yeah, hit the next Just one. Just a m Tyrese Radford's returning for another season in Aggieland. All-SEC second team this past season started all 34 games on the upstart Aggies. Averaged 13 points, five boards, two assists. He'll be back for one more season his COVID year with the Aggies. Radford isn't nearly as fun to say as four carry-ons. All right, there you have it. That is around the SEC. Uh, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products. Shout out to our guy, Trey Beal, and our friends at Gulf Coast Office Products. As a matter of fact, shout out our guy, Trey Beal. If you call Gulf Coast Office Products, uh, if you know Trey, just give him a shout out. Be like, hey, man, shout out, Trey Beal. Uh, that's my guy. Gulf Coast Office Products, gcopnet.com, gcopnet.com for Gulf Coast Office Products. Face-to-face sales service after the sale. The official office equipment provider, the LSU Tigers, the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the ULL Ragin' Cajuns. A uh, shout-out to the ULL Ragin' Cajuns today. We're heading to Lafayette. You know that. We'll be on uh, ESPN 1037 starting on June 26. Made that announcement. Uh, and ESPN 1041 in Lake Charles starting June 26. So we'll have the whole I-10 corridor 
from NOLA, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Lake Charles, and so all the ULL Raging Cajun fans can hear us every single day in wonderful FM radio on ESPN 1037. No shout out to McNeese State? Of course, shout out to McNeese. We're going to be in Lake Chuck. I'm fired up about that. Okay, just more fired up about ULL? Uh, no, I was just shouting out the uh, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette okay. Raging Cajun fans. Sure, sure, sure. Just, I mean, I'm just showing them some love. I just wanted today just to show the, of course, shout out to me. We talked about McNeese yesterday. Shout out Justin Hill. We just talked about Andre Sam, the defensive back, who was a two-time all-conference defensive back at McNeese and then went to Marshall and the Tulane, now in the portal again. Will Wade. Shout, of course, shout Coach out Wade. Will Wade. Cowboy up. Yeah. What do you you didn't say pony up cowboy up? What's Will? Does he have a? Can't look that up on Twitter. Okay, I wonder if Will's got is a it, new like a boot up, like a yeah, new boot you up. You know he's got one. He's got to have one. He's got to have one. We need to get Will on the show. It's uh, Man, that'd be great to debut. His Twitter is still day. his <laughs> his Twitter is still the LSU banner. <laughs> so if you've wondered if Will Wade ever used his Twitter account. Now you have your answer. Oh, man. <laughs> no, and he it's doesn't. No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, 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 he doesn't. Follows me, though. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out, Will. Cowboy up. What do you think it should be? I like that. Cowboy up. Yeah. You can do a whole same. Yeah, you know. You know. Yeah. But ULL, too. Yeah. yeah. Cajun up. Cajun up. Excited about it. All right, it's after further review. We'll knock out a quick break. Uh, Bourbon Dictionary, Taylor Calandro talks about some booze next. It's AFR. AFR. We're brought to you by the Renaissance Hotel and the Watermark Hotel, two beautiful properties in Baton Rouge, both with so much more than just guest rooms. Of course, the Renaissance right there on Blue Bonnet. I love telling you about the Renaissance because no matter what event you'd like to host, the Renaissance, they are in the business of saying yes. Like, shout out to Allison over at Renaissance. She's the events coordinator. You'll be working directly with her. If you want to host an event for 500 people, if you want to have an awards banquet or some type of formal dance, a lot of the fraternity sororities will have their formals there. If maybe it's a charity event, they can host you there. Uh, maybe it's a wedding reception. Renaissance Hotel can host you. Maybe you got a boardroom. You need a boardroom for a dozen people. Elegant boardroom, tables, chairs, TVs, all the amenities that you may need. They got you at the Renaissance Hotel right there on Blue Bonnet. It's where so many of the visiting teams who are coming in stay. It's where LSU football stays the night before the games. One place, it's the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Get 3.99% financing at Corval Toyota in Opelousas on select 2023 models. We also have a large selection of pre-owned inventory. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corvell Toyota in Opelousas. Happy Town, USA. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Swallow on me, bullets will follow on me. There's so much that you can run the slalom. And cops comb this top to bottom. They say that we are prone to violence, but it's home sweet home. With personalities clashing, chrome meets chrome. Prices up and down like this wall. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. When is a 
a taco more than just a taco when it's government taco voted best tacos three years in a row by 225 magazine government taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen with creative combinations like the magna carrot the philly buster or the steak of the union plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had and happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m and all day on thursday government taco 5621 government street Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all of that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking... After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Flucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Flucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. They're the gang with the slang. This is Bourbon Dictionary with Matt Moscona and Taylor Calandro. All right, let's get it. Got your booze questions, get them in. Email us, tweet us, jump in the buy for YouTube chat, text 225-396-4400, 396-4400, Go straight to my phone on the community app, so if you want to text, fire away. Taylor Calandro's with us. How are you, dude? Good, man. What's happening? Uh, another day. Excited about it. Our break-even pour over at Oliver Twist tonight is the Old Elk uh, Weeded Bourbon, uh, the eight-year weeded bourbon. Thoughts on it? Mm, I love it. I uh, love it. That, their weeded bourbon is one of my favorite things they do. You know they do. Fantastic. They do both a weeded bourbon and a straight wheat whiskey. Uh, can mm-hmm. you can you explain the difference in the mash bills? Yeah. So the weeded bourbon is a bourbon, so it's going to be fifty one at least fifty one percent corn um, for it to be a bourbon. And instead of using rye as the small small filler grain, they use wheat, um, and then I think some malt too. Um, traditionally, they use rye. To, for that small grain. Um, that's why I call it weeded. So for the wheat whiskey, it's 100% wheat whiskey. It's 100% wheat. That's it. 100% wheat. The difference taste-wise is, I mean, the wheat whiskey is very, very soft, easy, um, and the weeded bourbon is going to have your bourbon characteristic with a little spice, um, a little more oomph to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I look, I mean, any, any weeded bourbon, wheat tends to be softer, sweeter, right? I mean, like all of the, the Wellers, for example, are, are, are weeded bourbons. That's one of the reasons I think a lot of people like all, all of the Wellers. So yes, weeded bourbon is fantastic. And Old Elk did a magnificent job on, uh, on theirs. That's the break even for tonight over at, uh, at Oliver Twist. Seven bucks a pour. It's pretty good. And, and, and the most famous weeded is obviously that being Winkle and Weller and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. what's uh, what's new? We got um, we, have, we have two new barrel picks this week. Um, last week we had the Penelope. Still have some of that left. Um, earlier this week, or actually late last week, we got a JT Mellick pick. I talked about it like a month ago. We went and picked it out and everything okay. at JT Mellick. Four or five year old. It's really good. I think it's around 120 proof. Um, it's sixty five bucks, and we also got a. I uh, put this in quotations. A new Russell's Reserve pick that okay. was actually, it was actually it's, it's a ten year. It was distilled in two thousand twelve and bottled in twenty twenty one. It was supposed to come around Ida, and Glazer's Warehouse got destroyed. Mm. They lost the barrel. They lost some of the barrel. They found it after they did all the insurance stuff <laughs> and. Uh, we got a partial barrel from it. So um, this is a really, really good barrel. And you don't see Russell's barrels floating around that much anymore. So this is like a catalog pick. That is We're very excited about it. Wait, where? so they lost the barrel after Ida and found it? So, so Glazer's Warehouse is based by New Orleans, and the roof literally got ripped off. They had like a couple million dollars worth of damage to their mm-hmm. warehouse. 
And for insurance purposes, if anything gets wet during a storm, they have to throw it away. So they just throw away a bunch of our stuff. And they thought they threw away the whole barrel. They have so many thousands of cases of stuff there. Um, I think it's just a lot of going through everything and figuring out what was what. And, um, yeah, they discovered that we still have a partial barrel. And I think we have like 15 or 20 cases of it. So, so just to be clear, it, it wasn't the barrel that was in the warehouse. It was bo- the barrel which had been bottled. So it was boxes, cases of the of the bottled whiskey that had to be discarded. Sorry, yes, that I'm is... an alcohol guy, and no, I talk no, about no. alcohol. <laughs> yes. That's just really sad to know that they had to discard good whiskey. Oh, I'd have taken it. Oh, uh, uh, they. I, I I don't know how much they had to throw away, but I'm telling you, the roof got ripped off that warehouse, and yeah. they they have millions of dollars worth of inventory. If anything gets wet. For insurance, they have to throw in the garbage. Mm. God, that's such a shame. I, I remember it because Marucci flooded around that time, too. They they had the dumpster full of stuff that got wet because they had to throw it away for insurance. My, my brother-in-law was dumpster diving. He told me about it. Wow. So, um, Taylor yeah. Calandro is with us from over at Calandro's. Always answer your booze questions. So if you got them, get them in. You can tweet us at Matt Moscona. Uh, at 104.5 ESPN. You can jump hey, in the buy. Twitter world. Thank you, Juice. You can jump in the buy for YouTube chat or text 225-396-4400, 396-4400. Uh, let's get to it. Drew Fang said, ask Taylor, um, does Calandros have any cannabis-flavored fa- bourbon for our boy Musso to sip on while watching LSU baseball this weekend? <laughs> Actually, I got a sales sheet for a new um, uh, Delta 9 seltzer that's coming around. If you're not familiar with Delta 9, Musso probably is. But- okay. Delta 9 is a molecule off of Delta 8, which is marijuana traditionally. Delta 9 is also cannabis, but it doesn't give you the psychedelic effect. But anyway, we may be getting a Delta 9 filter. Okay. No, we, 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 we don't have any weed-flavored bourbon right now. No. So that's weed. Uh, that's a weed RTD? Yes, okay. but we don't have it yet. Um, I got a sales sheet for it today, um, but that should be popping up around town soon. Okay. I can't remember the name of it either. Muse, get fired up. That's awesome, man. I'm pumped for you. That could be really easy for you. Maybe a little more calories than you're used to, but hopefully that works out okay. Uh, Ethan Mott said, ask Taylor, my brother-in-law is from Russia. What's a really good vodka to get and share with him? Uh, he's from Russia? Yeah. Uh, why don't you just get him Beluga? What's Beluga? Um, but Beluga is Russian vodka. Okay. Um, I mean, vodka is vodka. You can, uh, there's not really much special out there. Now, if you can find a Clix from Sazerac, C-L-I-X, it's like a $300 bottle of vodka, and it's distilled like 150-something times or something like that. What's, wait, so what's the, because my understanding of vodka is always that vodka is supposed to taste like nothing. Mm-hmm. So what, what makes a really good vodka then? Or it bad, tastes like or, nothing. Or, but what makes a bad vodka? If it's supposed to taste like nothing. It, it tastes like permanent marker. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. All right. You know what bad vodka is when you taste it. Trust me. You I'm, know what bad vodka is. I'm not a vodka guy, man. So I, I haven't, uh, I can't say that I've partaken enough to really know. Um, You've never had taka vodka? I, I'm not going to say I never have, but honestly, like, I've, for, whenever I became of age and started drinking, uh, I I would drink Jack Daniels. You know, I drink Jack and Coke, Jack yeah. and Sprite, Jack, you know, Jack and Seven, whatever. And um, I drank drank beer. I I never really I never really drank vodka, man. I, I mean, I mean, I, the, the older I get, the more vodka I tend to drink. It's just a little more agreeable with me. But it, it, when, when I was in college and stuff, it was mostly like SoCo and stuff. You see from Seven, yeah. see from Bo, stuff like that. Mixing it with Sprite, just. <laughs> Just trying to get it in you, not really necessarily taste it. <laughs> Drink it you know on a budget, saying? brother. Drink, get a, bu- yeah. a buzz on a budget. Um, let's see if we can get a couple more in here. Lens and Mobile, best whiskey to drink to proceed a nice Italian meal. Oh, uh, you want to you want to choose a nice? Why don't you go get one of our Russell's ten years? They're sixty five bucks, and they're fantastic. Eric Gotro asked Taylor, "What's your favorite tequila for margaritas?" Um, I like Cimarron. Cimarron is a bottom shelf. It's like twenty five bucks. Okay. For a liter, um, the silver is about twenty five. The rope side is about twenty eight. It is unbelievable for margaritas, and it's a liter bottle too. How do you, what do you uh, mix to make a margarita? Uh, I, I I do just the really traditional tequila, um, lime, a little triple sec, and that's about it. Yeah. All right. He is Taylor Calandro over at Calandro's. Y'all give him a shout. A couple of good barrel picks in, and uh, we'll be over at Oliver Twist tonight with a um, an Old Elk Wheated Bourbon 
uh, for seven dollars a pour. Looking forward to that. All right, dude, we appreciate you as always, man. Thanks. All right, man. Thanks. All right, be well. It's after further review. Hump Day Show is brought to you by Pluckers. We're gonna knock out a, a top of the hour break. When we come back, uh, Foster Morrow is kind of doing a little bit of the media tour, and he stopped by the Schefter Pod with uh, Adam Schefter and talked about why he decided to sign with the New Orleans Saints. I think you're going to like hearing a little bit from Foster Moore. Also, in about 20 minutes from right now, Anthony Dasher, who covers the Georgia Bulldogs, will talk about this Georgia Bulldogs baseball team, which has pulled off some inexplicable series wins. How are they doing it? How does it match up against LSU? We'll talk about all that coming up here in about 20 minutes or so. Hour two of AFR is coming right up after Sports Center. AFR. Hey, if you're thinking about buying a new vehicle, and you've never considered a Volkswagen, I want you to do... Don't do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Put Volkswagen on your list. Just put Volkswagen on your list. Because the point is, you probably know somebody that's a Volkswagen driver, and they're loyal to the brand. People that drive Volkswagens tend to keep buying Volkswagens. And there's a reason for that. It's because they're expertly made. It's the great German engineering. You get all the safety features, the style, the feel, the performance of luxury. They're fun to drive and they're cost effective. There's a reason people who buy Volkswagens keep buying keep buying and driving more Volkswagens. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, and maybe it's you're buying that high school or college grad their, their first car. Maybe it's your, your family vehicle as you're upsizing. Go look at the, the Volkswagen Atlas. Just put Volkswagen on your list and go shop South Point Volkswagen, Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer, southpointvw.com. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside off the bench. Anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to Back Boat Service. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. The Heat Celtics threequel begins tonight with game one of the NBA's East Finals. It's the third time the last four years the teams are facing off in the conference finals. Boston's a heavy favorite to win the series, but don't count out Miami in part because of coach Eric Spolstra, believes ESPN's J.J. Redick. What he does in the playoffs is game to game. He figures out a way, whether it's going zone, changing a matchup, changing a rotation, whatever it may be. Game to game, he figures out a way to keep his team in the basketball game. And then you've got Jimmy Butler in the fourth quarter controlling the offense. They always have a chance with those two guys. Game 1, 8 Eastern ESPN Radio. One day after firing coach Doc Rivers, 76ers GM Daryl Morey told reporters star Joel Embiid was shocked by the move. Morey added Embiid had no say when it came to Rivers' fate and that no player will have a say in who the Sixers' new coach will be. Morey added that they are interested in bringing James Harden back. An MRI of Blue Jays first baseman Vladdy Guerrero Jr.'s knee checked out okay. He's day-to-day. He is not in tonight's lineup against the Yankees. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. Fortunately, GEICO makes it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. It's a good thing, too, because having a home is hard work. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. GEICO.com. Easy. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from, from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Let's Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt! Hey, shut up, kid! Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm. Muso. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. And Mr. Toby Tumblay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. We're heading to Athens here in about 15 minutes. Talk to Anthony Dasher, who covers the Georgia Bulldogs. A big shout out to the fine folks over at Miracle League. If you're not familiar, uh, Miracle League is a it's a it's a special needs baseball league where uh, kiddos with any range of uh, special needs can go play baseball. And um, they have a buddy that plays along with them, and uh, our son Drew just played for the second season. They had their last game last night. Uh, I did post this on uh, on social media because a lot of people ask about Drew, and so I'm always happy to share. And so they had their last game. Mike the Tiger was there last night. Uh, here's a video uh, if you're watching. It's on my, it's on my Instagram. It's on my uh, my Twitter if you want to see it. A video of of Drew uh, batting. He didn't quite take a hack. His uh, his aunt Roro uh, Lauren kind of had to push the bat into the ball <laughs> and then he he just uh casually walks to first base and didn't like that they they made him drop the bat he then picked up the bat and went and handed it to the uh the administrator uh gentleman there and then walked to first base so it's look i mean they're all the people you if you go out there it just it looks like total chaos and it is total chaos but it doesn't matter because the kids are out there having a good time, and that's really the only thing that matters. So uh, shout out to everybody associated with Miracle League and everybody who always asks me about Drew, man. I'm always thrilled to talk about him and appreciate all the, the love and prayers and support that people have given Drew and, and our family for for nine years. Drew will be nine in July, so it's hard to believe it's been that long. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a picture of Drew with Mike. Mike the Tiger came out last night uh, to Miracle League, so shout out. Who, By the way, that Mike the Tiger was huge. Like, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, can you can you tell by that? I'm asking you legit. Can you tell by this picture how big? Not really, no. Okay, so Drew uh, has hit a growth spurt, and he's at about this Mike the Tiger's navel. Uh, this whoever. Okay, we, I don't. If you're a kid listening, you understand that's someone in a suit. Okay, like that's that, <laughs> that's just that's a person in a suit. Whoever that guy is wearing the mascot suit, I'm here to tell you th- that guy's huge. Look, here's one of him just standing next to a very pull pull this up, Polly. If you could, you can even go full screen on it. 
so this is Drew walking up to get his medal. Can you can tell Mike the Tiger next to the the woman behind him? That one you can kind of like, tell. He's huge. All right, that guy has to be like six ten. I'm telling you, that Mike the Tiger was huge. Which is odd because there's like specific requirements for that job. They normally try to find people of the same height, people of, of everything, so you can't tell the difference of of Mike the Tigers. Well, that Mike the Tiger was huge. But thanks for coming out and for sweating your T Heine off yeah. in that suit last night because it was hot. It was hot last night. Anyway, shout out Miracle Lee. Um, okay, shout out Foster Morrow. So, uh, Foster Morrow, of course, we know is signed with the New Orleans Saints, and uh, he's starting to make uh, do some of the the media rounds now. For a while, the only media he had done was the Good Morning America interview with Michael Strahan. Uh, went on with um, Adam Schefter on the Schefter Pod and talked a little bit about what life has been like since uh, his diagnosis with lymphoma. It's been a bit of a roller coaster for me, obviously. Yep. Basically, I've gone through a bit of the ringer in terms of getting the diagnosis, fully understanding it, and moving forward from there. So they came back and they told me that I had a rare cell type of, of Hodgkin's lymphoma called nodular lymphatic predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma, NLPHL, alphabet soup, they call it. But basically, it's, it shows up 3 to 5% in all Hodgkin's lymphomas. It's slow growing. It's non-aggressive, but it's still cancer, right? And so for me, that basically meant that I didn't have to undergo chemotherapy. I didn't have to go undergo radiation. I didn't do anything other than this, this drug called rituximab, which is basically a protein that inserts anti-CD20 cells that targets the specific type of cancer that I had. So- it's phenomenal news. Didn't have to undergo intensive chemo. Basically has to take a, a, a pill. And he said right now uh, he's finished that treatment. And here's what's next with treatment being done. My schedule was looking like this. I finished Tuesday. Um, I signed Wednesday. And um, Thursday I was out running routes with my quarterback and my receivers and my running backs uh, over there at the Saints practice facility at wow. 730 in the morning. It's, it's amazing. I uh, did talk about how the doctors wanted him to kind of sort of slowly ramp up uh, and not be all in, but that's why we're able to sit here and talk about Foster Morrow participating in OTAs. And, you know, for the Saints, uh, it, it's a best-case scenario. And you know, Mickey Loomis talked about it, that, you know, they were signing the player and the person, and they were going to sign him no matter what. Uh, but this is a best-case scenario for the New Orleans Saints on the football field. Obviously for Foster Moore, the person, the, the, the news of the diagnosis and the treatment is phenomenal. So it's, that's, that's obviously the biggest win, but sp just specifically in the football silo, it's massive for New Orleans because they need a tight end. This is a major acquisition for them, and dude's going to be ready for OTAs. I loved this, though. Foster Morrow explained why he decided to sign with the Saints. The Saints called my agent the day after the diagnosis was given. So I, I did the physical on Saturday. They told me I had Hodgkins. Mickey Loomis called my agent and said, we value him as a player, but more importantly, we value him as a person. And I mean, we would absolutely love to sign him to whatever deal we can, whatever you guys feel comfortable. And whenever he's ready to play, we're, we're excited to have him. Regardless, we're gonna keep him here. We're gonna keep him at home. And for me, that just, that spoke volumes. It's pretty incredible. Um, you know, here we are today talking about Foster Morrow, who announced his jersey number. Foster Morrow is going to wear 82 with the New Orleans Saints, if you haven't heard yet. Um, and listening to Foster Morrow tell that story about Mickey Loomis speaks volumes about the culture of the New Orleans Saints. I'm not trying to be sappy or wax poetic, y'all, but one of the things we talk about with the Saints and have talked about ever since Sean Payton arrived back in 2006, was building culture. We've told the story a million times. There were veterans like Dante Stallworth and Wayne Gandy who were very quickly ushered out because they weren't bought into the new culture. When the Saints had their back-to-back -back losing, back-to-back-to-back -back -back seven and nine seasons in 14, 15, and 16, they had to remake that culture. And they parted ways with guys like Jimmy Graham and Kenny Stills and Brandon Cooks, productive players who they didn't feel were good cultural fits in that locker room anymore. And they rebuilt it around guys like Demario Davis, who's just like the cornerstone, quintessential team guy, team captain. And it looks good in a headline. It sounds good to say on radio. 
But then you hear Foster Morrow say that, and that right there speaks, just it, it screams from the mountaintop how much the Saints value culture and how much you can get buy-in from people and commitment from people when you believe in people. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not in any way, you know, I was just telling a story about Drew playing Miracle League, and I, was, I thought about this when I heard that quote from Foster Morrow. And, you know, over, so, sometimes when I talk about Drew, I know, um, I, I, I just make certain assumptions that people know, but I realize it's, it's been nine years, and a lot of people, don't, you know, we've gained affiliates in New Orleans and Alexandria and television, you know, WBTR, and a lot of people may not know, but like, so my son is about to be nine. We knew prenatally he was going to be, he was diagnosed and had a lot of medical stuff going on. We had to relocate to Houston. He was born at Texas Children's and we spent nine months in the hospital. Um, he's doing very well now and he's got a lot of, of special needs that it will probably follow him his whole life. And that's perfectly fine. He's a happy, he's happy and we, he's the joy of every day of our life. And um, we're insanely blessed. But, you know, going through something like that, you know, I think, and I, I'm not an NFL football player or anything, but you know, I've been at Guarantee Media here for 13 years now, and I've had plenty of opportunities to leave. Uh, people ask me a lot, "Would you ever leave Baton Rouge?" Probably not. I mean, it would take a a a giant excavator to to pull me out of here. And a big reason of that is you learn, like in your lowest moments in life, you learn who the people are that really care about you and really love you. And on days when I can remember being you know, I, I did my show remotely from Houston. I missed, I, I think I missed 50 shows that year. I think the number was actually 52. Um, and there were a lot of people in this building who had to pull a ton of weight because the afternoon drive guy missed 52 shows in a year. There was one day, I'll never forget this. There was one day I just started, it was the first segment of the show. I just did the first segment of the show. Erica, my wife, calls me and she's hysterical. Um, they had found an aneurysmal artery. Uh, in Drew's heart, and it was bad. It was very, very bad. And I literally, in in the first break of the show, I I put the headset on. I told James Harrelson, I said, James, I gotta go. And I just left after one segment. I just I just walked out and went to the hospital with absolutely no repercussions. Gordy was in his office, came down and just finished the rest of the show with no prep or anything like that. When that's the kind of you know, Flynn Foster like was totally in our corner and everything we ever needed. When that's the backing you have, of course you're going to go to battle for those people. When that's the culture you built, and I, I, I share all that just to say, like, here's Foster Morrow, who's got a cancer diagnosis. He hasn't even signed with the Saints yet. You like, you're, like, they they owed him nothing. They brought him here for a workout. They found the cancer diagnosis. Thank God they did. But they could have said, yeah, you know, we're going to put a, a hold on this. We wish you well. We'll pray for you. We can help with any assets or any. You know, any resources, we're happy to do that. Um, but as far as signing you to the football country, we're going to wait until, you know, we, we know more. And if you're clear, we'd love to revisit it. But, you know, we can't do this right now. It, it would have been totally, totally understandable for the Saints to do that. But the next day, Mickey Loomis calls Foster Morrow's agent and says, we're ready to sign him, whatever deal y'all are comfortable. And we'll walk this, this, pass, this path with you. You can tell me that guy ain't going to run through a wall for that organization? That guy's not going to be pot committed to do whatever he needs to do to make them win. That's why, man. You value people. You treat people great. That, that's how you build culture. And the Saints have done that, man. Despite, look, we, you and I, we can all have this conversation and argue and disagree over who they draft or who they sign or you know who the coach is and you know, the Derek Carr conversation. Are they, are they all in? Are they just win, winning enough to be okay? Would it, we can have that conversation. The one thing that is not debatable is how much this organization values its people and values culture. And that is darn near impossible to replicate. That is as impossible to fake because you know if people have your back. And the Saints clearly have Foster Morrow's back, and that's awesome. So uh, that was just phenomenal to hear. And I, I'm from on every level, this story just this story just continues to amaze on every level. Uh, his his healing, his ability to be back on the field, the, the blessing of the cancer not being as serious as it could have been, uh, not needing chemo, being able to be back on the field now for OTAs. Signing with the Saints, all this, all parts of this story, uh, you just marvel at watching it, and it's uh, good things for good people, which is great to see. Okay, um, let me knock out a break. We'll come back. Let's head to Athens and talk to Anthony Dasher. Covers the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll get a thumbnail uh, preview of LSU's weekend opponent. Series starts tomorrow, Thursday, five o'clock. First pitch, game one. We'll preview it next. AFR. Our update shows are brought to you by Pluckers, Nicholson, Blue Bonnet, Dine-In, Carry-Out, or Delivery. Hey, remember tonight and every Wednesday, 
is trivia. I remember it this week, Muse. 7.30 Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock Nicholson. Last week, I completely just had, I just lost my brain for a moment. Couldn't even remember what time trivia was. 7.30 Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock Nicholson, five rounds, live trivia, get your team together, go test your knowledge, win Pluckers gift cards, win Amazon gift cards, other great prizes. And remember, even if your team stinks and you don't get any questions right and you don't win a single round, every team that participates gets to spin the prize wheel. So every team is going to win something. Maybe it's food from Pluckers or any of the other great prizes that I just mentioned. That's every Wednesday at Pluckers Trivia Night, 7.30 Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock Nicholson for trivia at Pluckers. Dine-in, carry-out, or delivery, Uber Eats, DoorDash. Now, you can't play trivia if you get delivery. But it's at Pluckers. You like our wings, we'll give you the bird. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has $15,000 off plus 0.9% APR for 60 months on all new 22 Ford F-150 SEA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I spend my money up right down on my last dime. Come on, only back and right. I'm ready, which put me on through. Got to send my love. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Musso. Join me Monday through Friday for your daily update on LSU baseball with Musso at the Box, presented by New Orleans Flooring, wherever you get your podcast. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. Tigers wheels up to Athens a bit ago. Uh, they'll take on the Georgia Bulldogs, who right now are bringing up the rear in the SEC East and battling to get a spot in the the SC Tournament in Hoover. So big weekend for both of these teams. Let's head over to Athens. Anthony Dasher covers uh, the Georgia Bulldogs for UGASports.com, part of the Rivals Network. Good enough to spend a couple of minutes with us. Anthony, we appreciate the time, man. How are you? Hey, my pleasure. I'm doing pretty well. Hey, let's, um, I want to kind of ask about sort of what looks from the outside in kind of like an enigma with, with Georgia where, <laughs> man, they, 
they get swept by Missouri, but they win a series against Tennessee. They lose a series to Ole Miss, but they sweep Arkansas. What yeah. what gives with this team? <laughs> that's a very good question. I think that's something that Scott Strickland is still trying to figure out. But uh, really, you look at Georgia's inconsistency you know, this season, it all goes down to picking, especially uh, in the late innings. I was doing some research this morning for a story I'll have up later on our site that uh, Georgia has lost eight games in the ninth inning this year with a score either tied or Georgia was ahead. Seven of those games were in the ACC. And that's a huge reason why you're seeing Georgia sitting you know, kind of where they're at you know, right now. Again, they thought that pitch would be a lot better than what it is this year. And as good as I think their offense has been, you know, Charlie Conn is one of the better players in the conference. And we don't have the, the arms to, to get it done. It's going to cost you. You know, you're going to, I think, see the inconsistencies again that we've, we've seen some. You know, weekend you might get hot like it will happen, to, you know, in the Arkansas you know, series. They have some pitchers stepped up that had really done much all season long. And they were to, you know, pull out uh, you know, three wins. But, again, it's just been a series of inconsistencies. We saw it last week in Missouri. You know, two two losses at the bottom of the ninth on Saturday and Sunday. That's just kind of been George's story this year. Uh, Ole Miss um, is obviously not going to make the SEC tournament. Um, mm -hmm. So Mississippi State, uh, Georgia, and Missouri are kind of right there battling. Is there a tremendous sense of urgency this weekend around that program? Uh, yeah, I think there is. I mean, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say a lot to you. Know, Scott Strickland has been the head coach of the team now for 10 years. Uh, they have not made a, a super regional in that entire time. Uh, Georgia, as I mentioned, they've lost some ugly games. It's just some tough games. If, if Georgia struggles uh, in this series against LSU, loses it, gets swept, then that could be something uh, we're talking about next week is uh, maybe a coaching change. I think it's gotten back to that point this year, this season for this team. Uh, it's the team that I think they thought they would make the, a regional this year. But, again, just all the things that, you know, went wrong with the, the pitching and injuries. Because everybody got injured, so that can't be an excuse uh, for the team, in my, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, it's had a tough road. And uh, if they lose, uh, lose two or three to, or three to LSU, it's going to be make it even tougher for Coach Griffin, I, I want to think. Anthony Dasher is our guest, UGASports.com. Um, three lefties this weekend on the bump. As yep. we know the rotation, it's going to be Evans, Goldstein, and then Sullivan. Uh, when you look at, and again, for outside looking in, they, they're obviously juggling a rotation a bit. Um, what jumps off the page when you look at, at the way that uh, Scott Strickland's put together the rotation this weekend? Uh, well, it's pretty much by necessity. Like you said, they've had some injuries you know, this year. Jaden Woods, uh, Probably the, the the best pick as far as uh, you know major league prospect uh, is concerned. Has had some uh, shoulder issues. Has not pitched for the past uh, uh, month. Liam Sullivan, who's going to pitch, uh, I believe on on, on Sunday, I'm sorry, on Saturday, is uh, you know had some arm issues. And he has not pitched well in the last month. So they've had to, to really reach deep for guys like Charlie Goldstein, who actually has been pretty pitching pretty well. He was on a streak uh, back uh, about. Two weeks ago, where he was only given like one earned run in 17 innings, he pitched very well. And Jarvis Evans is a guy who they just literally just pulled off the chunky, but again, not a knock on Jarvis. They, they just got off to a really tough start. His ERA was well over 10, but they just pretty much ran out of the ball and had to throw him out there. And he, he pitched very well with the co entity freshman of the week two weeks ago uh, for his effort. And, uh, that's just kind of where they're at right now. They, these guys are pitching because basically they're the only ones left. We, uh, the last two weeks, we've seen teams pitch backwards against LSU. They've taken their Friday night guy, hold him for Saturday, so as not to have to sa essentially sacrifice your best arm against Paul Skeens. Is is there any bit of that with, with Jarvis Evans getting the ball in game one? I don't think so. I just think, like I said, he's probably pitched other than Charlie Gosk. He's probably pitching you know, the best of any Georgia you know, hurler right now. So no, I don't think it's a matter of them holding back. I mean, normally Liam Sullivan, you know, he has pitched Friday night on occasion, but he has really struggled. Like I said, the past month or so. So no, I I, I think they're throwing the right now the best the, the best three pitch. I think they're lining, they're lining up one two three to go to series. What about the bats? Uh, LSU's pitching has been um, has been really really bad the last two weekends. There's there's no mm -hmm. way around it. Um, we know that that is a hitter friendly park there at Foley Field as well. How are Georgia's bats uh, at this point in the season? Ah, uh, well, I mentioned Charlie Condon a while ago. Uh, he's already set the. Uh, 
SEC record uh, for freshman home runs. Of course, the redshirt freshman. He's got 24 home runs. I believe he's at 63 RBIs right now. Batting over 400. Uh, he's 6'6", six, six, about 225. And uh, he's the best, best hitter for George Alstein since Jordan Beckham in 2008. Hmm. I mean, he's, he's, he's really, really good. And you look at Connor Tate, who hits number three. He's been in the league now six years. He's hitting almost 400. But there were 17 home runs. Park Harbor, uh, third baseman, had 16 home runs. Uh, so the that two, three, to four spot lineup is is really you know pretty good. They caused a lot of damage for teams this year. No, otherwise it's a you know it's an offense that won't you know other than those three won't hit a ton of home runs. They've got some guys like like Mason Plant who who actually hits at the bottom of the lineup actually gives Georgia a little bit of a speed factor. And he's got Ben Anderson at the top of the lineup. Um, you know, is the if you remember how remember Brett Butler back with the, the Dodgers and Braves uh, you know way back when he kind of reminds me. Again, that that kind of player, but you know, otherwise it's uh, you know, been a decent hitting team. But those three guys I just mentioned in the middle are the ones that make it go. If they can't get it going, then Georgia's gonna be hard to hard to win games. If um if Georgia does manage to win this series against LSU, how does it look? Uh, they still got to go to Hoover and win two or three games, in my opinion. I mean, losing getting swept in Missouri was a uh, I call it a dagger. My story, uh, you know, after after that one, you know took place or not. So, yeah, if they, if, if they win two or three against LSU, they still have to win, I think, two games at Hoover to even, I think, be in the consideration. Because I still, you know, I don't, I don't think you're going to see 11 teams in SEC get in uh, the tournament as much as they might deserve it. I don't think that's going to happen. So you'll have to see Georgia win this series. So, and as far as they're concerned, you know, sweep would be the ideal thing and, and maybe move up a peg or two because, you know, otherwise, it's going to, they're going to have themselves in a very tough position, you know, come, come over next week. Is, would you see games – like Anthony, I think most people would just assume, look, Paul Skeens in game one has just been magnificent. Yeah, that sure. The only game he lost was the game against South Carolina where he only got to throw yeah. three innings because of the rain. So you kind right. of put an asterisk there. Um, sure. it, 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 would it be a slugfest in games two and three? I mean, is there a scenario where you could see Georgia uh, winning a, a, a close game, a game two or three? You could yeah. – Two, three, a three-two game, four-three game. I have a hard time seeing that, but I could see some slugfest. We've seen that in the conference this year at Foley Field. You mentioned the uh, the, the park can really play a hitter's time, especially when the, when the wind is blowing out. It can play very, very small. And uh, we've seen Georgia, you know, have some success winning games like 12, 10, 8, 9, you know, nine, eight, seven, five, something along those lines. But I know I, I don't see again. Not even I'm not even taking that hard into consideration. Cause seen it's just been so remarkable. You know, this year, but those games Friday and Saturday, I, I fully expect to be games where both teams score a lot of runs. He is Anthony Dasher, uh, UGA Sports.com, where you can read his stuff. Uh, LSU and Georgia three game series starts on Thursday as they wrap up the conference, uh, the conference slate. Anthony, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for a couple of minutes. Anytime, guys. All right. It is our pleasure. Uh, Anthony Dasher. This is After Further Review. We're glad you're with us here. I always love telling you about Shawbills Tire and Auto Service. Shawbillstire.com. Shawbillstire.com. Uh, maybe you're getting ready for that summer road trip. Uh, Memorial Day weekend is coming up. A lot of people hit the road uh, around that great holiday that we celebrate in this nation. Um, you need your, if you need new tires, you need your tires rotated. You need an oil change. You got to check engine lights, something you haven't checked on in a while. Bring it into Shawbills. You can schedule your service at Shawbillstire.com. Shawbillstire.com. Whatever service you may need to make sure you get your vehicle is in tip-top shape to uh, carry the family to the beach or wherever it may be this summer for that vacation. Disney, wherever you're going, Shaw Bills can help get you there. ShawBillsTire.com, ShawBillsTire.com. And if it is time for new tires, of course, Shaw Bills will sell you name-brand tires at wholesale prices. ShawBillsTire.com, Shaw Bills, where we keep you rolling. So um, I know one of the questions that we've been asked a good bit is, and a lot of LSU fans naturally are going to ask, is about pitching backwards because it's it's what Auburn and Mississippi State the last two weeks have done successfully, where they they basically sent a sacrificial lamb game one against Paul Skeens, kept their best arm for game two, won game two by the hardest. I mean, both the Auburn and Mississippi State series, LSU had leads in those games, and we, we know how it unfolded. But uh, you know, bizarre situations how they unfolded, but it worked. And then your baseball is, is wacky. And sometimes game threes in the SEC and in college baseball, when you get down pitching staffs, you have really bizarre results. And if you have a, a situation where you go walk six guys in the first inning, you know, you're going to, you have situations where you're buried before you even get, get going. So you never want to leave it to that game three because anything can happen in baseball. It's weird. So 
Uh, this is one of those where Georgia doesn't really have that luxury because they don't have um, they don't have a Kate Smith. I'm not telling you Kate Smith is going to set the world on fire, but Kate Smith is a good Friday night SEC pitcher who did very well uh, to hold LSU's bats in check for the bulk of that game on Saturday. So Georgia doesn't have that luxury, but the difference is Foley Field. And you look at these dimensions at Foley Field. Now, left field is long. Left field is 350. But right field is 314. It's 330 at the box. 314, I mean, you're talking about routine flies that leave the yard at Foley Field and right field. Right center is 365. You know, the, the power alleys at the box are 385. At Foley Field, it's 365 and 370. And straightaway center is 404, which is the box is 405 to straightaway center. But the ball will leave the park to right field and to, to left center, the power alleys, um, pretty easily, especially right field. So if you've got right-handed hitters that can go the opposite way or left-handed hitters that are dead pullers, like a guy like Braden Joe Bear, Cade Beloso, Tommy White, those dudes should feast this weekend in that park. And you get a ball and elevate it to right field, there's a really good chance it's going to leave. So um, expect runs this weekend on both sides. All right. Uh, it's after further review. Let me knock out a break. We'll do some overrated, underrated. Muse will have Tigers and the pros. Uh, I get to dance like an idiot a bit later. That'll be fun. And um, NBA draft lottery was last night. Should the NFL consider something serious? We'll talk about that in 30 minutes from right now. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. Buying or selling commercial or residential. If you need a realtor, you need Darren James. Agent225.com. Agent225.com. I tell you every single day, when you call Darren James, you're calling the number one realtor in the state of Louisiana. The realtor who literally sells more homes than anyone. And the other thing is, well, when I give you Darren's cell phone number, I'm going to give it to you in a second. You're calling Darren James. You're not going to be passed off to someone else on Darren's team. Darren's got a great team. Don't misunderstand. But you want to work directly with Darren James, call Darren James. Here's his cell number. 335-7666. That, of course, is 225. 335-7666. 335-7666 or agent225.com. Don't want to call? Text him. Shoot him a text right now. Dude's at Orlando at the EXP conference right now. I guarantee you he'll respond to your text or call like that. Call Darren James and get your home sold. 335-7666. Think real estate. Think Darren James. Zero dollars over MSRP at Corval Toyota in Opelousas. That's right. Don't pay over MSRP. There's no markups, no gains. So come on down to Happy Town. That's Corval Toyota in Opelousas, Happy Town, USA. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside off the bench. Anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Turn my music high, 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 yeah. You don't know what you're doing. Sure I do. I'm from the streets where the hood is swallow on me, bullets are follow on me. There's so much that you can run the slalom, and cops comb this top to bottom. They say that we are prone to violence, but it's home sweet home, where personalities clash and chrome meets chrome. Prices up and down like it's Wall Street. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar, where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front-to-back boat service. 
Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $20,000 off new 22 Ram 1500 SCA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. All right, let's say ah. Ah. Hmm. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. All right, rolling along. Um, LSU baseball beat McNeese uh, last night. One of the things that we saw was, uh, was Hayden Travinsky play first base uh, for the first time. Um, Cade Beloso, uh, DH. It was Jared Jones out of the lineup. It's going to be interesting to watch what um, Jay Johnson elects to do here. What we've seen the the past several weekends is Hayden Travinsky catching Ty Floyd in Game Two, and Jay Johnson has said he he likes Hayden Travinsky catching Ty Floyd. I believe the explanation he, he kind of talked about his size uh, because Floyd does you know, his fastball tends to elevate, and Travinsky's a bigger catcher. There were some reasons why. He liked Travinsky catching Floyd, which fine if that's the, the direction they want to go. But um, I think they're also looking at how do you get Travinsky's bat in the lineup. Now, it was interesting why you wouldn't play Beloso at first yesterday in DH Travinsky, considering Beloso's played a lot of first base. But it feels like if you were going to try it, you'd rather try it in a midweek game rather than try it when you go to Athens and you, you really need him to be over there and play well. So, uh, and by the way, I mean, it was all, all fine. I don't think there was anything egregious that happened in the ball game last night. So, uh, in first base is the easiest defensive position to play. It's why I know we've had the Trey Morgan conversation for years. It's, it's why Trey Morgan's not going to play first base because you can get a bat in the lineup and just stick him at first base as they stand on the base and catch it. Is Trey Morgan a great athlete at first? Yeah, but he's also a great athlete in left, and it's a better, he's more valuable to you tracking down fly balls in left field. Um, uh, but Travinsky, and this is what's interesting, because you can look at, at Travinsky and you can look at Jared Jones if you're trying to decide which bat you know to get or keep in the lineup. And um, when you look at them, yes, both are, are are hitting exceptionally well. And Jared Jones has 14 homers, and he has been really, really good this year, obviously. And Jared Jones on the season is hitting 309 with 14 homers and 45 RBI. That's magnificent. Uh, Travinsky's hitting 439 on the season with six homers. Obviously, just... Um, just 41 ABs for Travinsky as compared to 152 ABs for Jared Jones. So about a third of the ABs, but pacing beyond that. But here's the here's the real difference. I think this is what you have to look at. When you look at SEC-only statistics, so yes, um, Jared Jones is hitting 309 on the season. In conference play, Jared Jones is hitting 262. Now, 262 in conference play is still very good. By comparison, Cade Beloso is hitting 219. Uh, Gavin Dugas hitting 226. Jordan Thompson's hitting 10 point lower, 10 points lower, 252. So Jared Jones at 262 in conference play is still very good. He's also hit um a five of his 14 homers have come in conference play. The problem is the strikeouts. He struck out 38 times in 84 at bats against SEC pitching. That's almost every other at bat, and that's that's a problem. Travinsky against SEC pitching. He's hitting 391. And he struck out just six times. Six times in 23 at bats. That's one every four. Travinsky last year was a coin flip strikeout. That was the problem. He was he was not good defensively, and he had so much swing and miss. 
what he is showing you right now is maturity as a hitter because it don't matter if you're playing McNeese in the midweek or if you're playing an all-SEC pitcher on the weekend, dude is hitting the baseball and deserves to be in the lineup. So whether you DH him and take Beloso out, you play him at first base and take Jones out, you DH Travinsky, put Beloso at first, whatever you want to do there, if you want to make sure Travinsky is in the lineup every game, he's he's deserved, he's earned it. Unless if he hits a point where he really hits a skid and you only have one weekend left of conference play, then you're in the postseason. So it ain't like you got a lot of time. You you got your guys who you trust at this point. And Travinsky's only got 23 ABs in conference play, but he's hitting 391. He's got four homers, slugging 913. His on-base percentage is 500. He's only struck out six times. So he's been a better bat in conference play. That's not even debatable at this point. His bat needs to be in the lineup. It's on Jay Johnson to figure out where you put it. Do you, do you sit Jared Jones? I mean, Saturdays are easy. You're going to keep catching Stravinsky on Saturday for Floyd. Then you DH below so, and you have Jones at first. That's easy. What do you do games one and three if you're going to catch Malazzo? What do you do games one and three with that rotation of Travinsky, Jones, Beloso? One of those guys got to go to the bench, and and it shouldn't be Travinsky at this point. All right, it's after further review. We're glad to have you board with us here. You want to go learn to hit like that? Go to Traction, TractionSports.com, TractionSports.com. Traction, where champions are made. Remember, June 5th, June the – where are we? We are like three weeks away from the start of the Summer Baseball League over at Traction. That's June the 5th. You can register right now. Ages three and up. Also, summer baseball camp is registering right now. Your kiddos are out of school. What are you going to do with them during the days? Traction baseball camp. All the dates, all the information are online at tractionsports.com, tractionsports.com. Get there. Learn more about Traction Summer Baseball League. You, they, they play on Mondays, practice on Fridays. Maybe I have that backwards. I'm not looking at it right now, but it's basically just two days a week. And, of course, Traction Summer Baseball Camp. Go register right now, tractionsports.com. Always remember about Traction PT as well. If you're injured, you choose your physical therapist. You choose your physical ther- therapist. Why wouldn't you go to a place that rehabs professional athletes to get back on the field? If you want to get your golf game back, you want to go play pickleball or tennis or swim, you want to rehab that injury, Traction can help you do it. Traction Physical Therapy. It's TractionSports.com. TractionSports.com. Traction, where champions are made. Okay, I went a little long there, but let's do it anyway. We'll go quickly here, Muse. Let's do a little overrated, underrated. Overrated. Or underrated? I personally think he's criminally underrated. Overrated or underrated? Slot machines. I think slot machines are underrated. I think largely people who are casino goers turn their nose up at slot machines. Would we agree on this? If you're a card player, you're a game player, you turn your nose up. But it is a fun way for anyone to enjoy a casino. For example, I don't know how to play casino games. I, I don't gamble at all. You know what I know how to do? Put money in the slot machine, pull the lever, push the button. And obviously they wouldn't there wouldn't be rows and rows and rows of slot machines if they weren't turning a profit for the casino. Slot machines underrated. Overrated or underrated the pregame show. Which one? Just in general, the idea of the pregame show. Now, if we're talking about the NBA on TNT, incredible. Properly rated. If we're talking about me and T Bob doing Eagle 98.1 game day pregame show for five hours. Uh, that's that couldn't be rated lower, and it's still overrated. Is it just because you had to work with T-Bob for five hours? Yes. Okay. But Next. just the cons. Okay. Right. Next. Overrated or underrated? Halsey. Underrated. Oh. You like that one. Oh, Muse. Your face immediately. I'm going to tell you something about Halsey now. Okay. Okay. Now, you know I'm not exactly the most current, hip, 41-year-old man on the planet. All right. right. I'm 40. I'm not 41 yet. I'm 40. Um, I'm watching SNL a few years ago. Halsey is both the musical guest and the host. Okay. Brother, I'm going to tell you. There's sometimes when you watch SNL when you wouldn't know who's the cast member and who's the host. She was one of them. Nailed it. Comedic timing. Nailed it. And she can sing. And I'll be damned. One of the one of her musical performances, she's singing while she, they have a, a canvas on the on the floor. 
She's doing a sketch the size of the stage while she's singing. You want to talk about an incredibly talented human performer? Halsey. Boy, was I blown away. Underrated. M massively underrated. I Halsey. I can tell. Wow. Okay. I'm telling you, I am bull. I am a I am a fan, bro. I'm a big fan. She what? she won me that night. Big fan. That's overrated or underrated. Presented by nobody. Yeah, I was about to go nope, into a live reading. There isn't one. one. It's not presented mm -mm. by anybody. So you know mm -mm. what we're gonna do? We're gonna knock out a quick break. We'll come back. Muse will do Tigers and the Pros. And uh I understand we might have a little baby bash. Maybe. Maybe a little baby badge. Crank it up. If you're not watching on YouTube or WBTR, might I suggest you get to a TV or a screen somewhere. Tigers and the Pros is next. AFR. We're brought to you by River Cities One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. 752-0001, 752-0001, I got this five-star review. You'll love this one. I got this five-star review from Kayla Boswell who said, Nicole did an awesome job. We'll be requesting her the next time we need services. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. You want a career instead of a job? River City's one hour air. Have no experience in HVAC? Doesn't matter. They will train you. You can even get on-the-job training where you can shadow an expertly trained technician and learn as you go. This isn't a company that's going to hire you during the busy season and then lay you off. They want people who are there willing to work and earn a great living year-round. It's River City's One Hour Air. 752-0001, 752-0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, Hanny Time, Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. taco more than just a taco when it's government taco voted best tacos three years in a row by 225 magazine government taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen with creative combinations like the magna carrot the philly buster or the steak of the union plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had and happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m and all day on thursday government taco 5621 government street Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs>
After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. All right, wrapping up hour number two, we'll get some NBA draft lottery uh, results. What does it mean for the Pels? More importantly, though, should the NFL adopt an, an NFL draft lottery? Someone pitched that stupid idea today, and I want to crush it. We'll do that in 10 minutes. Right now, Muso has Tigers in the Pros. Tigers in the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Lee right. Michaels Fine Jewelry, where Baton Rouge gets engaged. Are we ready? Well, we're going to get into it here, are we, Matt. Uh, are we, we are, ready? We are. Yeah, we're ready. Is it uh, that? Uh? I mean, are we going to go right into it? No, no, not right into it. Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're going to let you wait a little bit. We're going to let you wait it out a little bit. All right. A little bit. Uh, we're going to start with Alex Bregman and the Houston Astros. <laughs> no. Nope. Seven of three winners, the Astros last night mm. over the Cubbies. Bregman, a part of it. Didn't record a hit, a hit, but did reach base via a walk, scored, and also drove in a run. So, no hits on the board for Bregman, but still very productive. Nonetheless, and again, Astros won it six to, uh, excuse me, seven to three. Kevin Gaussman last night dealt for the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm. Got a no decision, though, as the Yankees took the victory. Yeah! Gaussman, Gaussman uh, they weren't peeking in dugouts either. Good for them. Don't, don't be peeking in dugouts. Hey, Seven. I got an idea. Don't tip your pitches. That would help, wouldn't it? I like that he came out and said, yeah, I was tipping pitches. Well, he was. Okay. Plenty of people did. Tale as old as time. Yeah. Well, no technology. Don't tip your pitches. Seven innings And for then you Gaussman. know what Judge did? Hit one 460 last night. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he tends to do that, though. He's kind of good at it. I kind of wish he'd do the home run derby every year because nobody would ever beat him. No, nobody is ever going to beat that man in a home run derby. Nope. Seven innings for Gosman, five hits, three runs, only two of them earned. Punched out 10 again. I mean, Pete Alonso has the home run I'd derby. I'd take Judge. Down, I would take Judge. I really would. I saw Judge do the one that he did, and I was like, yeah, I don't think he'd ever lose. We said the same thing about Alonzo, then he lost. Exactly. But I like if you put them head up in a derby, I would take Judge. I would. I would. I'd take the field. No, I'm saying just those two, though. Like, those two in the final. If it came down to them, I would take Judge. Right, anyway. Right, is it time? No decision for Gosman. He did really well we last go. night. I'm ready. Here we uh, go. Last night, Jake Fraley went oh, two for three. The Reds beat the Rockies. Both of them were singles. He also drew a walk. Really productive night for Jake Fraley. Hey, Otter, if you're listening today, Jake Fraley for the Cincinnati Reds. The game happened while we were on air, Matt. Ha! 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 That a boy, Muse. He went 0 for 3 hey, you know with, what? A, with a run scored. But, Muse, what this shows is that you're learning. Don't give me stat lines from a game whenever another game's already happened since then. Well, I did, but give I gave you that stat to line, too. I did, but I gave you that style. Well, line good too. for you for learning from your mistake. He also, drew, he also drew a walk okay, in the game. Okay, is it time now? In a game that was played earlier today as well in we high A baseball. Here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> it, oh, my God. Matt is on a chair. Matt is on a chair dancing to Cyclone. And that's because Paul Gervais closed out a Cyclone dub earlier today over the Hudson Valley Renegades. Paul Gervais, two shutout innings pitched, one hit, one walk, two strikeouts. How's this for an ERA for our guy? 0.59 for Paul Gervais earlier in this season. The big seven-footer throwing gas. It's translating to the next level. We got to enjoy it while we can, Matt, because with those numbers, with those numbers, he might be getting, getting called up. It's it's a little harder to do this than I thought, Muse. Yeah, you, you, you well, didn't think this through. The, um, my headphone cord isn't very long, so I have to stay hunched right. over. Like this. All right. oh, What's up? Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Get a little foot up on the desk action. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, like a little stanky leg, right? Oh, there it is. Oh, I don't want to crease my sneakers. I can't go up on my toe. Oh, yeah. those aren't those aren't the G Nikes with the crease protector. Oh, I, I have crease protectors. Oh, okay, but you're, you're still gonna get gonna do really it. aggressive. Oh, yeah. 
Let's see if we did it last. We could just let this breathe. That, that was my, that was my thought last? process. This was last. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I got it. All right. Here you go, Muse. Oh, he done lost the shoe. If you're not watching, the shoes have been removed. Matt is half on the desk, half half in his chair, folks. A little tougher than I thought. So. Yeah. Like it, though. We like it, though. That's Tigers in the pros. If she moves her body like a cyclone, get her a gift from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. She deserves it. Wipe her up. Wipe her up. Put a ring on it. That's what I said. I'm so excited every time Paul Gervais pitches. Makes my day. LMFJ.com. AFR. Hmm, yep, there's my, there it is. Presented by Relief Windows. Windows door siding, Relief Windows, and ReliefWindows.com. Give Brandon Holly and the gang over at Relief Windows a call. Remember, uh, energy efficient replacement windows, beautiful entry doors, hardy plank, vinyl siding. They do it all. They do it better than anyone. A little out of breath. Kind of embarrassed by that. <sighs> Relief Windows. Hey, look, we're heading into the summer months. And as always before, one of the first things that Eric and I did when we bought our, our home that we're in now back in 2016, call Relief Windows. We had them install energy efficient replacement windows. Big reason for that, our den is just all windows. And so that room would get very hot. So we installed their impact resistant, storm force impact resistant windows. Keeps that room cool, keeps our energy bills down, increase our home's resale value. Learn more at reliefwindows.com. Windows door siding. Relief windows, reliefwindows.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $20,000 off new 22 Ram 1500 SCA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I spend my life. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to Back Boat Service. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, 
and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after hours. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. The Celtics Heat postseason trilogy at NBA Center stage tonight for a third time in four years. The teams meeting in the Eastern Conference Finals. Heavy underdog Miami, plus 410 by Caesars, needs Jimmy Butler to be aggressive to have a shot at the series upset. ESPN NBA analyst Kendrick Perkins. If I'm Jimmy Butler, I'm not waiting on anybody. I'm not being passive. I'm coming out and I'm emptying the clip. And I, when I say that, Jimmy Butler throughout this series, he needs to take 25 to 30 shots a game. And no one is going to be mad at him. And I, I think he will. I think Eric Spoelstra will put him in position to do that. Game one coverage, 8 Eastern ESPN Radio. Coach Doc Rivers firing apparently didn't sit well with 76ers star big man Joel Embiid. GM Daryl Morey said today Embiid was shocked and surprised by Rivers' dismissal. Morey added that Embiid did not have a say in Rivers' fate and that no player will have a say in their next coach. The MRI on Blue Jays' first baseman Vladdy Guerrero Jr.'s sore knee revealed no structural damage. He is not in the lineup tonight against the Yankees. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career you'll love with flexibility, great pay, and benefits, and one of the country's top workplaces? Come join their growing team. Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we Go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from, from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Muso. And Mr. Toby Tom Play. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. Oh, by the way, it's a hump day. Yeah. It's hump day. Let's hump, everybody. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Saints have added another offensive lineman. Hump. Talk about that coming up in a minute. It's hump day. LSU beat McNeese last night in baseball. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Wheels up to Athens. Hump day. Actually, probably have touched down by now in Athens. It's hump day. Just about an hour flight. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Might be at their hotel. Hump day. Maybe the ball yard. It's hump day. We previewed that series last hour with Anthony Dasher. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Taylor Calandro is here. We got some Pluckers trivia coming up. It's hump day. Oh, I'm excited about tonight. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Scone and tea at Oliver Twist. Hump day. Seven dollar pours of Old Delk eight-year weeded bourbon. It's hump day. That'll help me forget that I'm working with T-Bob on a Wednesday night. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? All right, let's get going here. Glad you're with us. Um, NBA draft lottery was last night. Pels had a half a percent chance of striking it rich. In the end, uh, they did not succeed in that half a chance. So uh, the New Orleans Pelicans will draft 14th. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs, uh, who won the lottery twice and had immense success in winning the lottery, um, good for them. It, uh, it has worked out in the past with um, 
I mean, going back to when they were able to land David Robinson and then the year David Robinson was hurt, uh, it allowed them to win the draft lottery and land Tim Duncan and Robinson and Duncan together, of course, won a championship back in 1999, sort of jump-started that Spurs dynasty. Interestingly enough, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but when you look at CBS Sports, did a great job looking at the net uh, gain or loss of um, of teams that won the lottery uh, based on um, their ba- based on record. Uh, the the greatest gain or loss with the lottery has been the Philadelphia 76ers. They have them plus twenty four games. The Charlotte Hornets second. Followed by the Lakers, Cleveland Cavaliers, Spurs, Pelicans, Supersonics, Brooklyn Nets, Orlando Magic, Portland Trailblazers, Clippers, Thunder, Raptors, Bulls, Pacers, Jazz, Rockets, Bucks, and then a whole bunch of teams that have had no impact and then actually a negative impact for the rest of the league from that point on. Um, I mean, the Warriors are negative 10. (laughs) I mean, it goes to show you, as much as we put on the draft lottery and the Pels have won it twice with Anthony Davis and Zion, it is no guarantee uh, whatsoever. So we'll talk a little bit more about the draft lottery coming up. The Saints have made this official. They have added another offensive lineman coming off of their their rookie minicamp this past week, and they brought in Scott Lashley uh, for a workout and ultimately decided to sign Scott Lashley after the workout this weekend. So Scott Lashley will go through um, a little bit of a uh, of a uh, kind of a thumbnail on his background, which is kind of interesting. So Scott Lashley was a was a four star coming out of uh, the state of Mississippi, and he signed with Alabama, and he played at Alabama for four seasons, and um, from 2016 to 2019, and he transferred from Alabama to Mississippi State as a graduate and played two seasons there in Starkville, 2020, the COVID year, and then took advantage of the COVID year and played a sixth season at Mississippi State in 2021. So four seasons at Bama, two seasons at Mississippi State, six collegiate seasons. Uh, He played 19 games for Alabama over his four years there. So it was really a backup. Uh, Played some right tackle, really a lot of special teams. Then the COVID year, he missed the entire season due to injury. And then played 12 games at right tackle for Mississippi State in 2021. So a, a guy that's 6'7", 315, a big, you know, long, uh, athletic guy, but largely played on the right side in his collegiate career. But what's really interesting, if you haven't noticed, is that there's a, there's a gap there. He was a 2022 draft prospect who went undrafted. So when you look at some of the, the draft you know, rankings, um, for offensive tackles from 2022, Scott Lashley was really like nowhere to be found on these draft rankings. Uh, this is one from a uh, draft countdown. They have Scott Lashley graded out as the 69th best offensive tackle in the 2022 draft. So he went undrafted, and I can't find any record anywhere of him having played football a year ago. One of the very interesting things about Scott Lashley is that he apparently also is a business owner, that he owns a, a sports performance training facility um, back in, uh, in in Mississippi. So good for him, by the way. It's called Scott Lashley Performance, and he's got a, it's got a Twitter page, and you can see all the, the, the athletes that are you know working out uh, there at his performance center as he's, he's putting that on his, his Twitter. So good for him. Young dude who is very clearly entrepreneurial as well, who's got a lot of young people working out there at his performance training facility in uh, in Mississippi. So anyway, Scott uh, Lashley goes to Saints rookie camp this past weekend, works out, and earns a roster spot. So the Saints sign him. And, you know, I, the offensive line for the New Orleans Saints is just, on its face, it doesn't look like there's much opportunity but it feels like we're heading into a year where there's going to be opportunity in the future. Here's what I mean. Like, James Hurst has been your left tackle. Andrews Pete's back at left guard. You know, McCoy's back at center. Ruiz is back at right guard. And, of course, Ramchick's back at right tackle. So you got your starting five. You used a first-round pick a year ago on Trevor Penning. And he's, you hope, you know, knock on Formica, 
You hope he has an awesome camp and wins the left tackle job. Like, you want your second-year first-round draft pick to beat out James Hurst and to be your franchise left tackle forever. And then you've got your tackles with Penning and with uh, with with Ramchick. Now, we have talked about the interior linemen, and you know, they drafted Saul DeVere this year uh, out of Old Dominion in round four. And so that's a guy you hope could eventually take a job next year of either Pete, who's probably in his last year in New Orleans, or Ruiz, who they did not pick up his fifth-year option, so he could very well be on his way out, or maybe they sign him to a lesser deal after the season. We'll see. But you look at that, and you go, okay, well, I see maybe the future there at at guard, but what about depth? You always have to have back, you know, depth on the interior and at tackle. You need depth, the guy that can play center, or the guard spots. That's why Will Clapp was so valuable. Will Clapp was so valuable to the Saints because he was a guy that could be your tackle eligible, right? The extra offensive lineman that the Saints like to use, but he could also play center or guard. So if anybody went down in the interior, Clapp could play any of those positions. That's why a guy like that was super valuable. So maybe you cross train guys at that spot right now. I mean, that's why Ruiz is valuable because if McCoy goes out, Ruiz can slide over and play center for you. But then you need a guard, and that's why Throckmorton matters. That's why maybe Saldaveri is important. Or Penning this year, if he doesn't win the left tackle job, could play in the interior. You understand, like, if you had a gigantic roster with unlimited spots, this wouldn't matter. But because you're limited to a 53-man roster, and everybody who's active on game day is going to play in some capacity, you got to have depth. And largely, it's your five starters, and you have an interior backup and a backup that could play tackle for you. So, yes, I, I look at, at these at spots like this and I say that that matters like I do think it very much matters you know who these guys are they're going to come in and give you depth because man we wouldn't have thought much about James Hurst you know when they signed him and you had Teron Armstead at left tackle but Armstead was oft injured and then Armstead signs with Miami and you need a left tackle and all of a sudden that's your guy or you get in a situation with Andrews Pete where he has missed time every year of his career and the fact that you got a guy uh, who can back up Pete if it was you, Calvin Throckmorton? That that matters. So yes, I'm I'm not gonna just be dismissive and say it's just a camp body because we've seen this too many times with players who are versatile that can play on either side of the line that earn themselves a roster spot. I mean, look, I just mentioned Throckmorton. That's a great example of it. A guy that was undrafted who came to camp, won a job, and has stuck around the league and has contributed for your team. And I, I'm not gonna tell you Scott Lashley is definitively that guy. But he's a guy that was a talented enough athlete coming out of high school to sign with Bama, was there for four years, played two years at Mississippi, or you know, he was at Mississippi State for two years, missed one year due to injury, and then started his sixth season. And is we talk so much about culture. This is a guy who's at you know, just out of college, owns his own performance fa- facility there in Mississippi, and um, you know, potentially could be someone who comes in and uh, and earns a roster spot. So worth worth watching. And may- maybe it's something where, you know. I'm I'm not like throwing James Hurst you know, out of the league, but in the NFL, there's the old adage that you're you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're never staying the same. And so maybe James Hurst at 31 years old is is still as many good years of football ahead of him and is still your best option either as the starter or as your swing tackle as a backup. Or maybe you get younger there with Trevor Penning at left tackle. And maybe it's a guy like Scott Lashley who can come in and be a swing tackle player on either side for you and is a, a versatile athletic dude that that gets you younger there. So uh, I, I'll never... At positions where you have to have versatility and numbers, I will never be dismissive of a signing like this. I'm not, sitting here, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, <laughs> that this, the Saints got a steal and Scott Lashley is going to be an all-pro. I'm not telling you that at all. What I'm telling you is... You got to have numbers and you got to have versatility on the offensive line, just like you do in the secondary. Look at what happened last year, right before the season. You trade C.J. Gardner, Johnson, um, Paulson Adebo was never really healthy. You were uncertain what was going to happen with Marshawn Lattimore. He obviously suffered an injury as well. Alante Taylor, who you drafted, was injured. You know, it kind of took some time, got back uh, up to speed and up to form. Well, all of a sudden, man, you know, guys like. P.J. Williams all of a sudden become very valuable because of their versatility. Alante Taylor, who you thought was probably going to be a nickelback, ended up playing outside, shows his his value in his versatility. So, yes, man, those guys matter. J.T. Gray, great special teamer, of course, but his ability to play safety when you need him in a pinch matters as well. Quarterback, it don't matter. Like, 
I hope Jay Kaner is great. You take a flyer on him. If it doesn't work, it don't work. You know, you can take a flyer late round on a running back and maybe he makes the team, but it ain't that big of a deal. It, it matters at positions where you have the most injuries on the offensive line and you have to have versatility and depth. So you're going to bring in a guy that, you th- that goes to rookie minicamp and earns a contract, you have my attention. You have All I'm saying is you have my attention. Okay, it's after further review. You want to email us, tweet us, you can. Uh, you can jump in the buy for YouTube chat or text 225-396-4400, 396-4400, 396-4400. We'll have some fun, do some pluckers trivia in about 15 minutes from right now. Uh, when we come back, I, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to talk about Pat McAfee going to ESPN. And then um, there was big news out of Colorado with Dion today, and I want to explain why that's super relevant for LSU. That's next. It's AFR. AFR. We're brought to you by New Orleans Flooring, nolaflooring.com, nolaflooring.com. Y'all, we're into the summer months. Obviously, we're into the spring, headed towards summer. This is the time when so many of us, the kids are out of school, a lot of us start planning vacations, you start looking around your house. This is a great time, if you're thinking about redoing your flooring, to give our friends at New Orleans Flooring a shout. they got two great locations, Metairie and Airline Highway in Prairieville. Again, Metairie, hence New Orleans Flooring, and Airline Highway in Prairieville. The Prairieville location, you're going south on Airline, you pass the Walmart, it's on the right, just past the Walmart, blue sign, blue awning, can't miss it. New Orleans Flooring. They keep a million square foot of product in stock, and that's how they save you money. Instead of having middlemen and distributors that keep passing off the product and passing off the cost to you, they take all the risk. They keep the flooring in stock so they can pass the savings on to you. And 12 months, same as cash financing available at New Orleans Flooring. NOLAflooring.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Turn my music high, 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 high. Sure I do. I'm from the streets where the hood is swallow on me. Bullets are follow on me. There's so much that you can run the slalom. The cops comb this top to bottom. They say that we are prone to violence, but it's home sweet home. With personalities clashing, chrome meets chrome. Prices up and down like this wall. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water that's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends, that's there for you at front-to-back boat service. So don't put it off.
After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. And I got so much stuff I want to get to. I'm running out of time. Uh, you saw Pat McAfee is moving to uh, to ESPN. I- I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. And just very candidly, I'm I don't I'm not a um, Pat McAfee fan. And this I shouldn't say I'm not a fan. People are going to think that that's a negative connotation. I just I don't watch his show. Um, I don't I really don't consume much content. When you're on this side and you do a lot of content creation throughout the day, there just isn't a lot of time to consume. So I'm obviously very familiar with Pat McAfee. He has a massively successful show. He is a quintessential, the quintessential example of winning in in this modern age of media, where you don't need a microphone and a and a radio tower or a TV tower or anything to win. If you have talent, the internet has leveled the playing field. The barrier to entry is zero. Now, the flip side of that is talent always wins because if you stink, it doesn't matter if you have a, a YouTube channel. Nobody's going to watch it. Pat McAfee has scaled something incredibly in four short years to where he did a deal with FanDuel for $120 million. Dude got quarterback money. Dude got qu- a former punter who started his own YouTube show got quarterback money. Incredible. Like, massive amounts of respect to Pat McAfee. I, I just I just can't tell you that I ever watch the show other than clips I see on Twitter or whatever it may be. There's one thing, though, that shocked me by this. McAfee did a deal. He's going to leave he's going to leave his YouTube channel. He's going to join ESPN. His show is going to air live weekdays and it'll be simulcast on ESPN, ESPN Plus and the ESPN YouTube channel. That of course is surprising because McAfee curses a lot. And I will be fascinated to see if the dynamic of that show changes without cursing. And that may sound very, very um, uh, I, that, that may sound stupid to a lot of you. Um, but it's like if you went to a Dave Chappelle show and he couldn't curse. It's just going to feel different. It's like when you listen to a radio edit of a song that you really like and the curse words are bleeped out or muted or scratched. It just feels different. So I'm curious. Like, it's funny. You know, T-Bob and I do Whiskey and Wine, and that is a NSFW show. I mean, it is adult language. I mean, we we the whole concept is, the concept of that show is it's two guys sitting at a bar, drinking, smoking a cigar, talking about the game. And... Talk as unfiltered as you would if there was no camera on. I mean, that's the concept of the show. That's what McAfee does. And now all of a sudden you're on ESPN, you are going to be more guarded. He can say, and he said to advertisers, um, he wouldn't swear nearly as much, but the substance and style of the show would not change despite its new home. He said, quote, we ain't changing a damn thing. Every other word is good to go. Uh, Won't be doing that because it's the middle of the day, but everything else would be good. Uh, We'll see. Uh, Color me skeptical, all right? I wish him luck. Great deal for him, obviously. It's a great deal. It's a better deal for ESPN. But um, I don't care what they're paying him. It's a better deal for ESPN, which continues to invest in personalities and talent because in in this culture, that's how you win. That, that's why Stephen A. is the highest paid employee at ESPN. So getting Pat McAfee, of course, is, is a giant win. He's bringing his tribe, his massive audience. Can you keep them? Will the show change? That's... That's one thing worth uh, just file it away. We'll see. I, I hope it does. I wish him well. I hope it does. All right. We're brought to you by Michelle Wang and Measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Um, a lot that I want to get to. I, you know what I'll do next? Um, I'll, I'll do the, the the NFL lottery piece next. I do want to get some LSU stuff because there's some news out of Colorado with Dion that impacts inadvertently LSU that I want to talk about. But um, Michelle Wang and Measurement. Uh, if you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. You can go to michelli.com. That's michelli.com with 30 different offices now across 11 different states. Uh, you want to see all of the different industries they serve. You can do it. When you go into their Harahan office, you'll notice they have big green dots all over the office. If you see a big green dot, that's indicative of an industry that they serve. 
I mean, you can go to the website and see it. Aerospace, aggregates, agriculture, chemical, petrochem, energy, food and beverage. I mean, so many different industries that they serve. You want to request a quote, you can do it at michelli.com. You want to find the nearest location, you can do it at michelli.com. You want to learn more about their services, you can do it at michelli.com. 76 years in business. It's Michelli weighing in measurement. michelli.com, michelli.com. So the NBA draft lottery was last night, and that's um, sparked this idea. Florio over at, at Pro Football Talk today had the idea of the NFL having a draft lottery and essentially said it would fill the dip that often occurs between the early days of free agency, the final countdown to the draft. It would generate attention and, more importantly, money. Okay, would, would a draft lottery generate attention? Yes. Could it generate money in a, a one-off TV program You know where you could do like you do with the draft and you have the lottery on TV? Yes. Does any of that matter for the NFL? No, because they already have our undivided attention 12 months out of the year. There is no dip or lull in the NFL calendar or schedule. The Super Bowl's in February. A few weeks later, you're, you're at the, the combine. Then a few weeks later, free agency begins. The tampering period begins, and then free agency begins. And then you start your draft run up, and then it's the draft, then it's rookie minicamp, then it's OTAs, then it's minicamp, and then it's training camp, and then it's the preseason. I mean, you get you get it. The the NFL has created a 12-month calendar. They don't, need, they don't need that. And the thing about the NFL that, aside just from our nation being completely football-obsessed, that is fantastic, is, is the parody. It's, it's the idea that the Philadelphia Eagles can go from quite literally tanking in a football game in 2020. Do you remember when they sat Jalen Hurts against Washington and played Nate Sudfeld? Do you remember that? In 2020. They sat Jalen Hurts against the Washington football team to, to tank to get a higher draft pick. That was a team that was at the bottom of the league and was just the best team in the NFC and played in the Super Bowl. I mean, the Rams made a trade for Matthew Stafford and won a Super Bowl. In the NFL, you always feel like you're a player away, a year away, like you can be a player a year away. The Cincinnati Bengals, they get the first overall pick. They draft Joe Burrow. Their, their entire organization's future has changed. The and you could argue that a a draft lottery would eliminate the idea of tanking. I, I don't know necessarily that's true. There's a draft lottery in the NBA and the Philadelphia 76ers tanked for half a decade. And it was the whole trust the process thing that they did. With uh was it Sam Hankey? Was that the, the GM's name of the, the, the Sixers who just decided to tank year after year after year? And look what he did. He built an amazing roster. Now they keep run it against a wall in the conference semifinals, but you know maybe they figure it out. But it doesn't mean their, their roster isn't great. It doesn't mean the process they used didn't work. It did. Look at the roster they built. Everybody has a different approach to it, how they want to do it, how they want to go about their rebuild. And whether you have a lottery or not, it isn't going to change that. But I think about this, man. The And what, what they were suggesting, what Florio was suggesting, was that all the 18 teams that don't make the playoffs, that it's a non-weighted lottery that all 18 teams have an equal shot of getting the first overall pick. Well, like this year, the Bears were, had the worst record. They had the first pick, which they traded. But Detroit had the 18th pick. I mean, Detroit won six of its last eight games, didn't it? Or was it eight straight, six straight to win? I mean, to finish the season was incredible how they finished the year. And you're going to tell me a, a team with a winning record then all of a sudden is going to get the first overall pick? No, like that's... It, it dumps on the idea of parity, which is what has caused the NFL to thrive, the any given Sunday nature of the NFL. So, no, I, I um, the NFL rules create tons of drama, tons of parity with the way that the, the seasons uh, end where any division winner, even if you're in, look at, the, look, at, look at the NFC South a year ago. You had a division winner make the playoffs with a sub-500 record. And you could say that doesn't happen often, but it does. It happened to Washington in 20, uh, 2020, the COVID year. Washington football team made the playoffs, hosted Tom Brady and the Patriots. Uh, excuse me, Tom Brady and the Bucks. Happened in 2014. Carolina won the division. They were 7-8-1. and one. Saints in 2010 had to go up to Seattle to play a, a Seahawks team with a losing record. They were a division winner. I mean, it's part of the reason why the NFL is amazing. 
You don't need to tank. There's always parity, and you're still a player away. So, no, I hate the idea of an NFL draft lottery. Keep it as it is. All right. So after further review, let me knock out a quick break, y'all. Uh, we'll come back, and um, when we do... Oh, we got Pluckers Trivia. Okay, we'll do some Pluckers Trivia, have some fun. I do want to do the Colorado story as well. I'll do that very quickly, and we'll do Pluckers Trivia. Uh, stick around with us here. It is AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Do business with someone you know, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Of course, it is a Wednesday, and I'm sitting here on, during the show, and there's a Hudco group text that I'm on, and hail confirmed in St. Bernard, hail confirmed in St. Gabriel, uh, weather's been bad in a lot of the areas. Hail strikes confirmed around South Louisiana. If you had hail today, give us a call at Hudco. Let us come to a free, no obligation roofing inspection. Your win- I'll tell you this again. Your wind hail deductible so often is less than your name storm deductible. So to get your roof repaired or replaced would cost you less now than waiting for a named storm. Let us work with you. Hudco Roofing. A Louisiana company that's been around for more than 20 years in all parts of the state. You can go to hudcoroofing.com. If it's the 318, the 225, the 504, the 337, the 985, we got a number for you to call at hudcoroofing.com. Hudcoroofing.com. Bayou Ford has $15,000 off plus 0.9% APR for 60 months on all new 22 Ford F-150 SCA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a...
After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all-you-can-eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. A little bit of breaking news. Uh, Two sort of transfer portal stories that are uh, relevant today. Um, One... LSU, of course, in the opener is going to take on Florida State. And today, Florida State landed uh, a pretty significant commitment. Keon Coleman has pledged to the Seminoles. So if you're not familiar, uh, Keon Coleman is a wide receiver who's from Opelousas. Uh, From Opelousas, who went to Michigan State. He led Michigan State this past season in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. So this is a very, very productive receiver. Uh, who entered the transfer portal and is now jumping aboard with the Seminoles. 6'4", 215-pounder, um, and he joins a notable transfer class for Florida State, including cornerback Fentrell Cypress from Virginia, tight end Jaheim Bell from South Carolina, offensive tackle Jeremiah Byers from UTEP, uh, Braden Fiske from Western Michigan, who's a defensive lineman who LSU offered, Um Johnny Wilson was the Arizona transfer, Arizona State transfer from a year ago, who's the big six seven receiver who led the team with nearly nine hundred yards and five touchdowns. So this is um um this is significant. It adds Jordan Travis un, it gives Jordan Travis another significant weapon for that Florida State offense this year and an LSU secondary, which is working in all new cornerbacks, and we'll see how the safety room shakes out because it's very clear as we've talked about. Brian Kelly and his staff aren't comfortable with their safeties as is right now, which is why they keep pursuing safeties, they keep offering safeties. And we'll see if they can get Andre Sam. Uh, but even still, I'll tell you, if Andre Sam is the answer, a guy who started his career at McNeese and went to Marshall and Tulane, like if that's your answer, like that's a problem. But that's that's indicative and, and illustrative of where they feel like they are right now in that secondary. Anyway, Ke- Keon Coleman has committed to uh, to Florida State as a transfer wide receiver. Another weapon that um, uh, another weapon that LSU's uh, defense is going to have to contend with in that season opener on uh, on Labor Day weekend. Another quick transfer note. Um, and I, this we talked yesterday about Jawan Johnson uh, flipping from Colorado to uh, to LSU, and it's significant because Jawan Johnson's a Louisiana guy from Lafayette Christian. And you know was committed to to Colorado, decommitted and now flipped is flipped to LSU. And again, I, I think this is massively significant because of the work Deion Sanders is doing and the cachet he has. Uh, Deion got another four star recruit for 2024. Aaron Butler is the number five uh, athlete in the country for the class of 2024. He committed to Colorado. Also, um, running back. Alton McCaskill from University of Houston announced he's transferring to Colorado for this season. Remember, this is after Kentucky running back Cavassier Smoke has already transferred to Colorado. So my point is, in, in, in Colorado has the number one transfer class in the country. Now, naturally, they're going to because of numbers. they got 40 players in their transfer class. But going to Colorado, playing for Dion, has a lot of cachet right now, a lot of national and brand appeal and for LSU to flip a kid from Louisiana away from Colorado, don't undersell that. That's important considering just how much work Dion Coach Prime is doing right now in the transfer portal and the recruiting class. So that is, I don't know what Jawan Johnson is going to end up being at LSU. I mean, he's going to be a, he's going to be a defensive back and play safety. But my point is, I don't know how good of a career he's going to have. But just the the optics of wrestling away a Louisiana kid from Deion Sanders, who is rolling right now in recruiting, is a big deal. So, a couple of recruiting stories to follow away. All right, we're brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. We'll do Plucker's Trivia here in just a quick second. Let me remind you about Dr. Blake Williamson and the Williamson Eye Center. Call 924-2020, 924-2020. I tell you every single day, change your life. Just go for that consultation with Dr. Blake Williamson over at the Williamson Eye Center. If you wear contacts or glasses, ditch them forever. Ditch them forever. No matter your age or your refractive issue, the Williamson Eye Center has a refractive procedure for you that can help you live your life without contacts or glasses. It is so freeing. It is so liberating. It is so incredible to wake up in the morning and just see. If you haven't 
felt that, can't remember the last time you were able to do that or have never been able to do that, call 924-2020. 924-2020 or williamsoni.com. Okay, OtterLocks is coming up, but first, a little business at hand. We do this every Wednesday. It is trivia night over at Pluckers, so our guy Stevie Levy, the king of the wing, floats me a few teaser questions, and we lob them out there to our guy Matthew Muso to see how he does. Muse, how are you feeling about these today? Feel great. Can't wait. Let's do it. All right, we got a little bit of variety today. All right. We have a sports question. Love it. We got a movie question. Could be good. We got a science question. Mm, not as confident, but maybe. Yeah. I think you're going 0 for 3. Okay. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the first time. I'm just going to be honest. No, no it wouldn't. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time. All right, you ready? Yeah. You know what? I'm take this back. Okay. Now that I'm reading them, I think you're getting this one. I think you're right. get, I, I think you're getting this question. I, I think you will get this answer. I have confidence that you will get this answer. All right. Well, I've let you down before with that too. So. Yes, you have. Yes. Also a fact. That's that's yep. true. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go. Basically, anything is possible. Due to the fact that it is both home to m- many teams and the NASCAR Hall of Fame. What state is nicknamed NASCAR Valley? Due to the fact that it is both home to many teams and the NASCAR Hall of Fame, what state is nicknamed NASCAR Valley? Oh. Man, I want to say North Carolina, but I don't know if that's right. Uh, I'll go with North Carolina. Yep. Ricky Bobby, bruh. Yeah, I, I, on, I, I know. I, a lot of races there, too. If you ain't first, you're last. Yeah, if you ain't first. Hell, Charlotte Ricky. Motor Freeway. I was high when I said that. You can finish second, second third. third. You can finish fourth. You can be fifth. You can be fifth. That don't even make no sense, Ricky. Love that movie. God. I want to go fast. <laughs> All right, Muse, number two. Yep. James Woods' character Lester in the movie Casino shares his last name with what card suit? You've got a yeah, yeah, twenty five well, percent I mean, I've, chance. I've seen Casino as oh! well. I, I just it's been a while. Um, is it Spade? No? Eh. Heart. Buzz yourself, damn it! Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. Do it again! I forgot about that. Well, it ain't clubs. Yeah, it's not clubs. Which means... You don't know the... Diamond. Fr- I was like, what is the other suit? Yeah, diamond. Diamond, yeah. Holly. Mm. Lester Diamond. Like, that was the one that I thought anybody could just stumble their way into. Oh, my God. Actually, I stumbled into the NASCAR one, really. Well, no, that was an educated guess. Yeah, it was, but, yeah, I can't, that's fair. I mean, I Diamond is watch- one, like, his last name is Spade? Come on, man. David? That's you're a real talk- person, too. Right, I mean. You're talking about the casino the name, Casino's Diamond. Come on, anyway, whatever. And you've seen the movie. I have. I need uh, to go watch it again. It's been a minute. All right, last one, Muse. Yep. Used to provide structure to connective tissue, what is the most abundant protein in the human body? Oh, God, I feel like I should actually know that. Um, is it um, one of the one of the means? Uh, I don't know. One of the scenes or one of the means? Uh, Glymine? I don't know. No. Uh, we were looking for collagen. Oh. Collagen was the that's, correct answer. That's um, not anyway. real. Well, Muse, you continue to thrill us and amaze us One with for just three. how dumb you are. One ah! for three. That's not bad. One for three. You take that. 
You would take that if you were a Major League Baseball player. Absolutely. But you're not a Major League Baseball player. I'm not. You're a terrible trivia player is what you are. It's not good. No, it's, it's not. not. It's All right. Good. It's after further review. We'll knock out our final break. We'll come back. Otter Locks next. AFR. Brought to you by Clegg's Nursery with four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. Get on by Clegg's Nursery. Tell you about their full greenhouses. Tell you how they're partnered with True Value Hardware Store. Tell you how they got tons of decor. If it's bird feeders, hummingbird feeders, uh, wind chimes, tuned wind chimes, tons of stuff. Remember, I really want to stress this too. Y'all, because uh, over this weekend, we were sitting outside the back patio. Eric and I were having having dinner together on uh, on Friday. And mosquitoes are back, right? So do what we did. Go to Clegg's Nursery. This is the most effective, affordable way to get rid of mosquitoes. Clegg's has a product called the Mosquito Eradicator. It's by Aon. It used to be a different company. They changed the name. Don't worry about it. It's the same product. Just ask them for the thing that kills mosquitoes that Moscona talks about. It's $24.99. It'll get rid of mosquitoes for 90 days at a time. We have a pool and water behind our house. We don't have mosquitoes. You won't either. Buy local, shop local. It's Clegg's Nursery. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. taco more than just a taco when it's government taco voted best tacos three years in a row by 225 magazine government taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen with creative combinations like the magna carrot the philly buster or the steak of the union plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had and happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m and all day on thursday government taco 5621 government street Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, and my door. That's what's the matter. Relief windows can fix all that. I got you. Pop, pop. What's up? Oh my gosh, look. Curb appeal. That's a good looking neighborhood. Reliefwindows.com. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's that time again. It's heating up. Your boat's getting ready to come out and spend all summer on the water. It's time to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service, where if you want an incredible custom speaker install, it's going to blow people away in the water. That's there for you. You want an HD sonar where you can see the fish under the water before you cast, beat all your friends. That's there for you at Front to Back Boat Service. So don't put it off. We got the parts in right now. Get them now before they go back on back order. Front to Back Boat Service. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Presented by Plucker's Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Plucker's Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. 
Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a hump day edition of AFR presented by Pluckers. One thing left to do. Let's find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. Well, last night we had the Mariners on the run line. We had the Cardinals on the money line. We had the Nuggets laying six and hook. But we did have the Rangers on the money line. So, a one and three night. Let's get it back. We turn to the one and only, the incomparable and of an incomprehensible, the Oddfather himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, rough night. The hook got us with the Nuggets last night, man. Oh, God, dog. Joker. I mean, you God. play you play lights out. Even I know. Free throw. And, I uh, know. I mean, Hey, Van Gundy had uh, laid the six and a half. He's like, dunk it. Dunk it. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you what, though, man. What a game. I mean, for the Nuggets to be up, uh, the Lakers to rally the way they did make a game uh, of it. Uh, what a game. I, man, I, I boo-booed all over the place. Uh, I'm a big hedge guy slash middle. I just did not see the Lakers coming back. And a lot of the, uh, the games, the NBA playoffs, once they've gotten kind of blown out, the teams have made big comebacks. It was out of nowhere last night in the altitude, yeah. the whole bit. Uh, yeah. But I don't want to see, um, you know, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. The kid from Kentucky trying to guard LeBron, Murray. Lamar. Yeah, Jamal Murray. I mean, can we can we switch off of that, please? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Murray. Jake Braley, <laughs> a one for three today. <laughs> Two out walk. He scored on a double. <laughs> and I had it in Tigers in the pros, Otter. Uh-huh. Uh, Two out walk, he scored. Oh, you man. hear that? Oh, there you oh, go. All right, here we go. All Boston right, what we got? What we got? Seattle. Uh, Boston and Seattle. Um, listen, uh, Elder Castillo, Gilbert Miller, best rotation in baseball. And also Seattle has the number one full and ERA in Major League Baseball. We got to we got to avoid them. We get Gonzalez. We'll go against him, but we want to avoid that bullpen. So double play first five. Okay. Red Sox first five over first five. All right, Boston first five and over first five. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, Musso. So there's your, your your Boston team. Uh, thank you very much, of uh, our Texas Rangers fans, for Nathan Evaldi. Nathan Evaldi enters tonight's game 28 and two thirds scoreless inning streak, 44 strikeouts to five walks in that run. He's the number one wins above replacement pitcher in Major League Baseball. Oh, wait, Thank wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Before you go any further, Boston, first five, money line or on the run line? No, money line. Money line. Okay, got it. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Atlanta Strider averaging 15 strikeouts per nine innings. Uh, that would be the all-time best. They've been playing the sport for 140 years. Under first five. <laughs> Under first five. And the, it's a three and a half Atlanta and Texas. All right. Atlanta and Texas under first five. Okay. All right. Here's one for you. So the ticket count is all on Miami. A lot of public money on Miami, but the line continues to creep up. Called a line reversal. Pros versus Joes. I don't really like the game, but I'm going to take the Celtics minus the eight and a half as that line uh, continues to climb up. The respected money is on Boston tonight. Okay. A little odd, man, that Miami has um, has has made it this far. I mean, from being in the play-in now to being in the conference finals. I mean, Jimmy Butler in the postseason is a real thing. Uh, eight and a half, though, for Boston at home is the number. Uh, all and, right. No, go ahead. And we're, well, just last year, Matt, remember, they I mean, they, they kind of messed around with uh, the Heat. It went seven. It was at Miami, and Jimmy Butler had a three uh, at the buzzer to yep. win it. I mean, it was a long one. But that's the thing about the Celtics. Uh, and actually, Al Horford yesterday's practice had to kind of get them and say, guys, too much goofing off, whatever. I think this group of Celtics think those banners hanging up there are there. Mm. You know, I mean, kind of like a little bit of, you know, uh, confidence without the accomplishment, so to speak. That makes but sense. we're on them tonight because they, they let these teams hang around. The Hawks shouldn't have lasted six with this team. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, the, the Sixers uh, shouldn't have lasted seven with this team. They're better than last year if you had to be like Malcolm Brogdon, and they're healthy. So we're on them tonight. 
All right. Uh, it's Wednesday. Where are you, Otter? Roca Pizzeria. Awesome down place. Down Government yeah. Street. Same side as Guarantee Media. Come on down. We've got a nice crowd in here for happy hour right now. Uh, my buddy Miguel is uh, is uh, managing over here. Even the legendary Pat Green is over here visiting us right now. Man. And Max is still so, so, kind of licking his wounds from trying to fade Man City uh, in the Champions League semifinal. So. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Uh, PGA, PGA <laughs> tomorrow, Max. We got we, we got our golf consensus tonight too. Our One four top in golf uh, at six forty-five. All right, game time with Jimmy out follows us in Baton Rouge. If you're not in Baton Rouge, online one zero four five ESPN dot com. Thank you, Otter. Was that? What was that? Did you hang up on him? No. Or did he hang up? I think he hung up. Oh, okay. We're brought to you by the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Before we get out of here, uh, do you think that was maybe a soccer, like an Olé, like a Man I have City, no idea Man City? So you think that's was. what that was? I don't know. I, don't I know. do not know. Uh, Blue Bonnet and Baton Rouge, Ambassador Caffrey and Lafayette, and online at theantiagingclinics.com. Once you look and feel like your younger self, they can help at the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Take advantage of their great specials. Award winning surgeon, Dr. Todd Howell. Check it out. Non-invasive, minimally invasive vasor lipo. It's at the Aesthetic Medicine and Nath Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Muse, Polly, thanks. We'll see you tomorrow at 3. AFR. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $20,000 off new 22 Ram 1500 SCA trucks and incredible deals on all remaining 2022 inventory, all with Bayou's 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Turn my music high, high. Ha, ha, yeah. You don't know what you're doing. Sure I do. I'm from the streets where the hood is swallow on me. Bullets are follow on me. There's so much that you can run the slalom. The cops comb this top to bottom. They say that we are prone to violence. But it's home sweet home. With personalities clashing, chrome meets chrome. Prices up and down like this wall. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Hey there, little buddy. What's the matter? What's the matter? My windows, siding, my door. That's what